Hello. My name is Rachel GNS Middle. Gilbert and Sullivan is my middle name, and my middle name is my last name. And I am here today on behalf of Four Bear Theatre to explore the magic of the Gilbert and Sullivan operas by very pedantically ranking every element of them. Oh God, who are you? Weren't you expecting me, Rachel? No, I wasn't. Oh. Oh, can you can you justify your presence mm. in my living room? Well, I um I know that sometimes it's really hard to find an alto for a show. Um, mm. So I thought I'd come, and uh, I'm not an alto, but I am a mezzo, and I'm I'm fighting off a chest infection. So hopefully, that's kind of enough. That sounds like the right kind of vibe yeah. for the day. And <laughs> um, what we're gonna do is. Um, See, Kitty is very cute. What we're going to do is we are going to sit. We're going to sit. May, may we're going to sit you? down. You may join me. Oh, thank you. We're going to sit down, and we're just going to have like a look at the parameters because I have discussed the parameters. I, I want to set my I own have, parameter here and say that's yeah. too close. <laughs> I have, I have already decided the parameters for the alto. Arias. It's funny you should say that because when I was making my notes very diligently in mm. anticipation of this, I was thinking of different parameters and I wonder if any of ours uh, overlap. That'll be interesting. So let us kind of set the camera up on its tripod so that we can both be seen, which will happen now. Ah, what? that works. You see, I'm really good at editing. I should really be on TikTok, which I am. But I'm not really a creator. I actually Where can tried. we find you on TikTok, Rachel? Um, well, <laughs> I'm like Rachel Middle. I think it's like I'm like Rachel J. Middle. Rachel Middle is because my middle name, okay, my middle name is actually Joanna. It's not G and S. Wait a second. I know. Sorry, guys. It's not G and S. You know, it may as well be G and S. Anyway, anyway, uh, let me taught you and the thing is we may change what the parameters are based on what mm. emma's thinking as mm. well because we haven't i haven't scored these yet this is all done live yeah i i haven't scored but i've i mean it has to be markers okay. i've got i've got a i've got a top mm. view and a bottom cluster and we're gonna hash it out I we think. have to have music out of 20 because that's what i always out do. of 20 yeah, okay yeah. let me let me just take a note for so myself. music i put musicality so there we go yeah, music, yeah, music yeah, yeah. out of 20 and I have like the poetry of the lyrics. They're just like how well the verses are I constructed. The, the effectiveness. Poetry. So let's just put poetry. Yeah. I like it. Then I have that's just out of ten. Yeah, yeah. Then I have emotional slash comedic impact out of twenty. And the reason I do this is because, and I do kind of see like what why I need to do this because. When I was doing my, I seem to remember it happening specifically in my duets video, a lot of the more emotional duets, which weren't at all comedic, just automatically Were did ranked lower. worse. And um, I was thinking this, I was like, how do not... you, it's like comparing apples to oranges, mm. how, you know, there's a place for, you know, the romantic mm. or, the, or the heartfelt alongside the comedic. So, yeah. And I've tried to think about that when I've been... And I still think that nothing can really get like over an 18 unless it ticks both boxes. Ooh. I still kind of think that, but unless something is so powerful mm -hmm. we're like blown away by it, maybe. I don't know. What's I that score, Dido? 20. Okay. Then I've also got narrative slash character importance. So like, mm -hmm. how well does this song, A, yeah. tell the story, and B, like reflect the character singing it? I have... Um made a little subgenre of what I call the exposition songs, of which there are a few. And yeah. I, within those, I think there are ones that, as you say, hit both marks. That's, a, that's why I've said narrative slash character, because mm. some songs are very much like, this is what the story is. And some songs are like, this is mm. who I am. And so as long as they tick one of those boxes, it's fine. But if they tick neither of those boxes, then we're having issues. <laughs> uh, and then it's like a mark out of 10 for enjoyment as mm -hmm. well. Which but is I, a bit... Of a subjective that's just, category. Good. That's just good. I don't, have I, that subjective I don't want to introduce like an extra thing, but I was thinking yeah, about yeah. longevity, which is like cultural impact. Cultural, yeah. Like, mm. can you sing this today without needing to edit it? Are the references lost? But maybe that's let's, maybe that's something we can bring in, but not let's, necessarily let's have in the do mouth. It. No, let's do it. No, I want to do it. Cultural, cultural um, longevity. Yeah, I just like the word longevity. I know. Let's just do it for this one. See how mm. it works out. See how it um, out of ten, presumably. And then just see how that kind of works. So music and emotional comedic impact are out of 20, everything else is 10, is that correct? 
Correct. I think that is oh. correct. So, so we're starting with trial, obviously. Uh, the thing is, we would be starting with Thespis. Oh. Or trial. If somebody trial. hadn't lost the blimmin' manuscript. No, but the thing is, there's no, no, no but there's no, no Alto Aria in no. Thespis anyway. I think maybe there was at one time like a proto Diana one. But it's just it just doesn't really exist. I'm gonna have to defer to you on a lot of yeah. um, the moments and operas I'm less familiar with because I would say about half the canon I'm very much I'm in it I know it yeah I, yeah you know. I know Emma's a proper GNS head I think there's just maybe like two you don't really know very well yeah which is coincidentally the two that Full Bear Theatre have not done really yeah which is Utopia Limited and Princess Ida. I can see why Ida wouldn't be very easy to do with a chamber cast I exactly. Yeah. And also, it's not my favourite. Got lovely. Although I did, I did have gently, gently, evidently in my head today, to the the intentions come back to me. To the moon. They really, really got stuck in a little earworm. I am also aware that Lady Sangazier has mm, an aria, aria, and I don't, let let's just look at the lyrics. Someone has. For it. Someone did reset it, right? I'm sure on. It's called In Days Gone By. Yeah, and it was supposed to come after um, her recit, presumably, right? Um, Which would make yeah, for so yes. many solos in the first act of The Sorcerer. So, it, uh, so the lyrics are, In days gone by, these eyes were bright, This bosom fair, these cheeks were rosy, This faded brow was snowy white, These lips were fresh as new-plucked posy. My girlish love, he never guessed, Until the day we parted. Oh, so this is actually giving you, like, backstory about mm -hmm. her and Marmaduke. I treasured it within my heart, alone and broken-hearted. These poor old... These poor old heart? No, it's the no, second time second bar. Time Sorry. Bar. Um, these cheeks are wan... Wan? With a Wan, with age and care. Weirdly wan. Weirdly Of course, yeah! <laughs> these weary eyes have done their duty. As white as falling snow, my hair and faded all my girlish beauty. Oh. I'm getting patience vibes. I uh, see my exactly a bit like Lady yeah. Jane. Yeah, I see my charms depart, but memories chain I cannot sever. For ah, within my poor old heart, the fire of love burns bright, bright as ever. The fire of love burns bright as ever. I see. I think those lyrics are pretty cool. And yeah. I'm that I'm a, I, I you know what I'm going to admit something. I've never actually read that. Um, because I haven't really done the sorcerer too often, and um, that is, I think those those lyrics would add so much dimension to Lady Sangersfield's character. They would, because it, it's really weird that she mm. has two duets and no dialogue, and that, yeah. and that is her entire character. Yeah, what a what a strange choice. What an but that choice. is. I really like that, and the thing as a sorcerer is made up of all these exposition songs of like, mm -hmm. you know, first you get Constance, then you get Dr. Daly, then, then you, you get, get Aline, Aline. Yeah. then you get this, and then Alexis, and, it's, and, and then John Mellington Wells, and you're like, could we have like, some ensemble numbers yeah. please? And, but I, I, I quite like that mm -hmm. because it's kind of like a showcase of characters, which I think is quite fun, it's very different mm -hmm. to all the others, but why miss this one out? Is, did, did people just consider this to be the least important of them all? Because this actually adds quite a dimension to her. But I suppose that it's not as if it's we long, get everything we need to know about her and Marmaduke's past from Welcome Joy. So I don't maybe... know. I don't think we do. No? I mean, we get they had a past, but this kind of... Um, my girlish love, he never guessed until the day we parted. So she couldn't, That's very she couldn't tell him until he left. What's just sad about it is, and this is the same reason I get sad about Constance and Dr. Daly, is that you never, you never kind of see them, these couples, individually come together at the end. So, like, mm. you don't get that wonderful serotonin rush of seeing these characters, like, Happy being couples. in love and then, like, coming together. And that's really sad. I, I want to see that. As a person who likes love and mm. gets, like, all like, no, I like it when I'm sure. Have love. you done finales? I'm assuming you've already done finales. Act one finales, yes. Oh, never act two finales. Because I good. think maybe something that um, people who don't enjoy GNS pick up on is endings often feel rushed. Everyone feels grouped together mm. and then you don't actually get to revel in the proper couples being yeah. reunited. Which I actually do enjoy the Sorcerer Act 2 finale for because it feels like they do get their little moment with the two mini um, quartets. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like It feels like they do get their little moment to be reunited. Whereas some of the other ones, like Grand Duke that we've just done, it's like, happy couples, everyone's married. And you're like, okay. Like, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Whatever the words are. Yeah, I, th I think that, uh, yeah, because that, that's like another one to look forward to, the Act 2 finales video. Um, mm. That's going to be a good one. And I'm also, I'm also going to do like a general one about story as well. It's like how well the story kind of goes and how well they wrap up. You know, mm. that's an important thing. So, uh, yeah, that is our introduction. And as far as you know, there is no break because it's going to carry on <laughs> right now. Number 16 is Come, Come Mighty, Mighty Must, Must from Princess Ida. So, oh, wow. So I, I thought this was the best one in the list. So you didn't like them. I'm kidding. <laughs> Can you imagine? I struggled to find a recording of it, would you believe? I watched the wonderful Patricia Combs from yeah. the Austin GNS Society of Texas. Did this uh, on YouTube. Yes. What, she has an absolutely gorgeous voice. Oh, my God. Mm. I really enjoyed that video. And that was, it was also just like, it, because I wanted to see somebody do it really well, yeah, because that would help me understand why it's put in the show. But I must admit, Patricia, like I, I even though the performance was incredible of it, mm. there's just so little you can do with it that I no. was still a little bit bored I had, towards I had the to end. Kind I, I of, must admit, I'm, I had to kind of look this one up because Ida is just—it's not one of my favourites just yeah. because of sheer length. And I haven't done it, and I feel like when you haven't performed in a show, you don't maybe feel the affinity that you have with like you know a show maybe you did first or you've done most recently yeah. um and the annoying thing about come mighty must is it does have some interesting ideas for wordplay and i feel like it could have been so much more like, okay you know you know something immediately that i really really do like about it mm. um in, and i don't know if you guys remember what joanna was <laughs> saying about how sullivan manages to create these kind of sound worlds for each opera and this one for me sounds so academic mm. do you know mm -hmm. what i mean that kind of like mm -hmm. when when you think of like american university and those kind of like the style like, guides those or whatever, school whatever. songs yeah. it sounds very much like yeah. a school song and it's so it's very it sounds very academic and it kind of but it also has these crunchy words do, 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 come something is uh, like i actually yeah. got the words off my heart for this one but uh, we listened bring to it, it both yesterday oh yeah i'll bring it up um, but uh and it can be emotional yeah. and as i say i think the person i saw doing it on the youtube video was doing the absolute best they could and it, it was great but it's just how much do people care about semantics? Like, yeah. can people connect with that? So something that uh, Kate was telling me in the comments um, was that, that she does kind of identify with Lady Blanche and actually does understand that it can be really high stakes in the academic world mm. to kind of be in like fighting for various positions. <coughs> and actually the politics of that are kind yeah. of very dramatic and the stakes would have been high for her. But still, like, how relatable is this song like how do you sing do you hear it and go yes i'm empathizing with this i'm afraid it's just inaccessible to me emotionally i don't really feel much at all when i listen to this yeah, one or I, read the lyrics i feel like yeah. it either needed to be more emotional or more comedic at the yeah. moment it kind of straddles this weird middle ground where it's not really funny and it's not it's the comic it, emotion are the lyrics almost too clever yeah, I, th I think That's he's more I focused feel. on the joke because it's the, um, you know, he's got the may, might, could, would, should. Uh, oh, I don't oh, like that bit. Your moods so I quick. cheer this call, whatever your tense, you are imperfect all. Like, that's a great pun, Gilbert. It's a good pun, but it but doesn't just, uh, make an emotional it's aria. It's not really like. Yeah, it's, I find it wet in both categories, mm. and I'd honestly only give it about a 7 out of 10. Yeah, it really doesn't, it doesn't that. do much for me at all, I'm afraid. Yeah, so, I, can't, I can't even remember the tune enough to sing it for you. The tune is pretty, but mm. honestly, I'd rank it roughly with maybe Buttercup's Better Aria. Yeah, uh, that, that's about where I place it in terms of music. Was that was that an well, 11? Well, we put that as an 11. I, yeah. think that, I think that 11 is probably a good mark. For that. Oh! What? For Come Mighty Must? I okay. almost died just then. I did this. I put my elbow on the chopping board and almost it. But I have refla reflexes. She has the acid refluxes. I life. have reflexes like An, a cat. A cat. Pardon, no. <laughs> Pardon me. That was the cat. Good, <laughs> goodness me. Do you guys remember that video series that was like a series of videos that are responding to each other's videos and it was oh, a yeah. song that went, pardon me. I didn't see that one. So what are we thinking? So we're giving it 11 for music. Lyrics, poetry. I think it's almost too clever. So like, I appreciate Gilbert's playing with words, but I find it inaccessible. It's so honestly, I'd yeah. give it maybe 
Maybe a seven if we're feeling nice, or a six if we're feeling. I think a six because those foolish yeah. Fay is so much better in my oh. opinion. Because foolish Fay manages to be enjoyable and more accessible. That's so true. Emotional so comedic true. impact. For Didn't me, we only give that like a, like, like, like a seven a, or yeah, a six? Like, like, honestly, I, I, I am not moved. It, by it's that. not strong enough in either camp. Yeah. Narrative or character importance. I mean, it does give you a bit it more of lunch. But okay, let, let let me ask you an honest question. When you, when you are watching a production of Princess Ida, I'm never watching a production of Princess Ida. Okay, Ida. when you hear her say, "I will bide my time," and go off, mm. and then you hear, bum, 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 who doesn't just get like an immediate, "Oh, good." I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, it's just because that's where the song goes. Because you want it to go from her speech straight into Gently Gently ah, and not okay. have her do the aria. Because when you hear that, 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 that kind of, or I, I actually can't remember the introduction now, but um, when when you hear that introduction, I, I kind of, yeah. I, I get a kind of, oh. Yes. But actually, when we saw Bus Pass Opera do it, that, that she was actually really great and that mm. song was quite funny. But, you know, it's generally, as a rule, it's not a song that I really want to yeah. hear. I, I look forward to. It's, an, yeah. it's an okay song, but it's just, I want to get Do we think it's you know? before, better or worse than Buttercup? In terms of importance. Worse. Because it's be worse. worse. Five? I think maybe a Oh. We haven't seen scores these yeah. long since Buttercup. En <laughs> enjoyment, <laughs> enjoyment. Oh God, oh. I've maybe even a two oh. for me. I'm sorry because I think it's yeah. like I like it a, a tiny bit. Honestly, this isn't this is one that's usually cut. So I, I don't know. I mean, is is is, is that a three for cultural yeah. longevity? I don't think it's high because honestly, it only really comes up in conversation <laughs> when we're talking about the fact that it was cut. <laughs> And, you know, that's not a great claim to fame, to, to be honest, is mm. it? Number 15 is... Frederick was a little lad from HMS... <laughs> from the Pirates from the of HMS Penzance. Of Penzance. <laughs> yes, HMS Penzance. They do kind of roll into one yeah. after a point, don't they? Yeah. That is so interesting, because, yeah, for a long time, I'd really kind of coupled together like, you can pirates, of, them. pirates of Penzance well, they're two been nautical mind. themes exactly. Gilbert and Sullivan it's funny isn't it so like, close the, together the nautical ones he was like oh there. that ship was really good I think I'll you know so this one may not take us that long what do you think about when Frederick was a little lad exposition 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 pun homophone yeah exposition exposition Yet exposition she takes a very long time oh to say something so, so. which you it's know, a very dramatic revelation because it gets I revealed extremely dully like i wouldn't necessarily give this a 10 out of 10 for narrative just because she takes a long time to say mm. it and it could have very easily been explained very quickly in the dialogue and yeah. it would have had like the same impact could, like it's not could have been an email as they say it's, yeah so i think i I'd probably give it like a seven or an eight for now. Yeah, I mean, it's, that, that's it's, the only it's category strong. which I think is going to do well. So let's yeah. give it an eight. Let's be yeah. nice. Um, but yeah, and also actually cultural longevity, it might do well in that one as yeah, well. Yeah, I think when we were thinking about Buttercups, I think this this is the one that I'm like, okay, if people knew people another one. It. Well, they know Ruth as a character. I think they might not remember mm. this song specifically, but I think after Buttercup, it's the most memorable or well known. Mm. Even so it's not that memorable. Is it a seven? Out of ten? Yeah. Or twenty. Ten. Is that a ten? Yeah. Is it a seven? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. That's fair. Seven. seven. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. And you will be. Music. Wow, that that is the sounds answer. like a kazoo. I have played Imagine. Ruth twice, and <clears throat> I did not enjoy the song either time. Though. No, I think it needs to be taken at a clip because it's three identical yeah. verses. It needs to be taken at a clip, and they maybe need to think of something to do yeah. with staging because when you're not musically interesting, you need to be visually appealing. So I hope she's going around and doing weird stuff with pirates. Honestly, and... I would say when it comes to Sullivan, phoning it in, and like <laughs> this is probably the absolute. 
is is this the the it's least worse. interesting mm-hmm. song in Gilbert and Sullivan musically? Is it? Is it the mo- the thing is? I know there are lots of patter songs that because they're so wordy, they have to be like mm. that. But this one doesn't really have that excuse. So put a pin I, in that one. Could yeah, be. I mean, I honestly, I although. I, I put a pinafore on that. <laughs> a, li- a little something I like to call <laughs> Oh, Mighty Must, uh, which um, at least I can remember to the tune of this one. That's true. I mean, I would. Let's let's give this. Is this frequently I mean, cut? No, it can't no, be cut. No, it can't be cut. It can't be cut. But yeah, I don't this... think. I mean, let's kind of wrap enjoyment into this as well. Like, is this a song that you like ever? I would skip this. The only time I listened to it on my Spotify was when I was trying to learn the lyrics of the three very similar verses in the right order. Yeah, this is... This is a revision only song. What out of 20 is this? For music. What out of 20 is this? What out of 20 this is? (laughs) What are you going to order? Um, You're going to get cultural references from me, that's what you're going to get. Yeah. Uh, Two. Emma Reddy. Fish Breath. Barbecue Fingers. Cultural References. (laughs) And not cultural appropriation. <laughs> no. Is that something different? Oh, hello. I thought it was a cat in the background. No. Um, You're just going mad. I cannot, in all good conscience, give this anything more than a six out of twenty. <laughs> That's fine. Five. Should we give it a five? It accomplishes... It finishes a musical line. When we consider that we are <laughs> really trying to make a big effort to make a big range in these scores. Oh, yeah. And also, like... Strong opinions. Mm-hmm. I have some. Really I have some strong pretty opinions. strong opinions. But then there are some that I just don't care yeah. for, and this is one of them. But just remember that the reason we're here is because we love Gilbert and Sullivan. So we're not being mean to these songs. No. We wouldn't cut this song. No, no there is not strongest. I um, I was going to sing this in a concert. It was cut in a concert. But you know, the, I could have done lyric, a good job. poetry of the lyrics. Like <sighs> no, because there's a sentence in it that really annoys me. There's a line. What's the third verse? I was just, um, um, they, I soon I found out like, beyond, beyond all doubt like, the, the scope, scope of this disaster. disaster. But, but I, I hadn't, hadn't the place, place to return to. Never. I hate that he suddenly but changed I hadn't the, the face to return yeah. to my place. The handbrake. I hate that he suddenly master. changed the rhythm. And it's very much the like nursery maid. He's not like a lot of it is. Mm. It doesn't quite scan in the way that yeah, his lyrics yeah. usually do. Gilbert rhymes work with work. Does this does this get a two for lyrics? So shaky. That is not good. Rhyming work with pilot work and is... pirate. Pi- I would say pilot pirate, and it's probably more easily confused in but it's Scottish is, it's not than a, it is in English. The thing is, it's not a rhyme. It's a mishearing. But it's not. It could have been a better. Same. Yeah, but it, no. But it's pirate. that no one would ever mishear pilot for pirate if you were pronouncing them properly. But in the yeah. but when she's telling it, she says pilot. Look how different the word was. Pirate. That's not how those words are pronounced. That makes me cross. Did anyone on an else? English level. Did anyone else only realise at this moment that in the Pirates of Penzance you have the pilot pirate confusion and, and the, the orphan orphan, orphan, orphan confusion. confusion? Lazy writing. Same trick. No, 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 no. Oh, no, I quite like that. But what's interesting is that that had never occurred to me. It had never occurred to me that there were two different kind of mishearing word misunderstandings. Mm. Isn't it? But I still think maybe like a three for poetry. Sure. Yeah. Probably a three. Emotional comedic impact of this song. Uh, it plays into what you're saying. Have you ha- have you ever kind of had this heard the song and people are going, ah! <laughs> No. No. What, sorry, what are you going to say before I cut you off from such stuff? I can't remember. You said it plays into that. What you were saying earlier, but might not have been earlier, it might be later, depending on where we're ranked in the video, plays into what you were saying about the, the habits of amateur choruses to potentially go, oh, and chew the scenery when they're mm. not reacting authentically. I feel like the this entire song is mock like, oh, what a silly mistake, instead of, mm. I've never seen an actress sing this and mean it. Because mm. I'll give the lyrics some mm. kudos here. If you had actually messed up so badly as to trade your boss's son away to a band of pirates... Isn't instead... that interesting? But that also hadn't occurred to me. Well, who... But actually, to make this song more interesting, you up the emotional stakes Yeah, Because there aren't emotions. That hadn't even but, occurred to me. But, you know, because when Ruth and Frederick are talking and he's saying, are oh, you beautiful and all this, he is huge to her. Like, he's basically her entire life. Mm. And, like, through the benevolence of his dad, she didn't get fired or whatever. 
but she went and then she's joined the pirates yeah. and it's all lovely and she's so in love with him and she would do anything for him she doesn't want him to leave because if he sees a girl she knows he'll be off like a shot because beauty yeah. is only skin deep like the com- yeah, yeah, skin so deep. the comedy in this one for sure just comes from the ridiculousness of, of the this situation event. and what it means to the people involved but the thing is remember that he already knows about it because mm. she he, he i pardoned you long ago mm-hmm. it's the pirate she's telling but she still feels guilty about it so i'd say for that reason you know I, i'd make but i'd maybe give it like kind of an eight or a nine out of twenty yeah that seems fair like yeah yeah enjoyment though overall enjoyment quickly i don't mind it uh out ten uh five middle of the road Really? Um, I'd probably give it a four. You put me on the spot. I, I speak the truth. Let's give it a five. But you're a Stigano and I'm an auto, so... That's true. Maybe it's an inherent bias. <laughs> You've got a stigma against these artists. This one sounds so good because they don't have it. And they have some hot microphone. We're going to do some tapping on the pepper. So nice. Start an ASMR channel, but that's actually you guys, would be such a every, good ASMR you, you artist. Need to, you, guys, you need to all get a pepper. Mm-hmm. Right, stop what you're doing. Pause this video. Go We're out, buy a here. pepper, and just do this. I've never in my life done that, and that it's is really the nicest nice thing. thing. And I literally, I have a mic as well. I could do it some of my videos. What you do you guys really think about ASMR. about GNS ASMR? I mean, what G- would that look like? G- GNSMR. 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 I mean, would it would it would it be would it be like this? You know, would, would, it, would, it, would, it, be? would it would it would it be it like would be. this? Which would would you watch buy that. that? I would sleep for that. I would fall asleep to that every night. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I feel like the weird bits are going to be what's good and the actual ranking would be like, I'm going to give this 27. I mean, that's usually that's what the case is. That's, that's good though. Because the thing is, Emma, like, I'm going to tell you a secret that I've only told oh, to like no. everyone that watches these videos. I reckon GNS isn't the important thing. Like, I love them maybe, this. Maybe the it's, real... It's, it's more just to kind of like... Make a nice nerdy community about GNS, yeah, and just and a burgeoning ASMR career. And, maybe, and, maybe... and and just and just it's a, it's an excuse to talk <laughs> about them. But I'm also aware that like me as like an autistic person, I like to kind of make lists of things mm. and like it. And when I when I make kind of these really quantitative lists, it seems to then open me up to talk about things that I emotionally connect to. Which is really interesting because I think for, for me talking, I just need a kind of structure, mm-hmm. and the ranking just provides me with a structure. That's what it is. You're talking to someone who used to spend their weekends reorganizing their CDs by color and/or alphabetizing. I'm and well into that. Number fourteen is Hail Meadow Wars Men slash I'm called Little Buttercup, which I had to look at on my screen from HMS Pinafore. Now, Emma, what is your experience with this song? So, I have never played Buttercup. Um, I've done Hebe in a concert production of Pinafore. Mm. But uh, I saw this in performance when we went to Stokesy Court, a fancy house in Shropshire, to do... Um, oh, where's my mug? To do What a Delightful Prospect. Oh, yes. An evening of Gilbert and Sullivan. Um and I think the thing that struck me first was, oh, an unaccompanied bit of recit. That's fun to pluck a note out of the air. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's probably one that everyone knows, even if you don't enjoy GNS or if you don't, you think you don't know GNS and then you go, mm. oh, I've seen The Simpsons. And I remember Kelsey Grammer exactly. doing a really fabulous rendition of this in that episode. So you, you've and, never, you've never I've played, never played part, Buttercup, but you no. know the aria, right? Yeah. yeah, but so like, what, what would, like, what do you think if, if you were given a part of Little Buttercup in a production of H.M.S. Spinner what, um, what do you think you could bring to this aria that maybe people haven't done before? Oh God, that's a question. Um, 
because it's a hard one. It's it, it's hard to bring character to, but I think is. you could probably have a good crack at it. I could try. I mean, I don't know. It could, maybe it's interesting to see her because she seems quite confident. I know she's the butt of the joke a lot of the time in Pinafore. The buttercup of the joke. The, uh, the um the hull of the joke. Um, but she, I don't know. She could be quite sexily confident, but also clumsy. I think that could be funny. She could. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how she feels about her job because. It's a bit of a weird one. A bum boat, bum boat woman. It's mm. not the most attractive sounding job, is it? Yeah. Um, so I don't really think. I don't really know because the melody is so simple. Yeah, which is probably why it's so. What would you give it for music? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get hate for this. I, it's not one of my high ranked ones. I honestly think it's a simple melody. It's catchy. But it's nothing special. I would probably give it a ten, honestly. Is that really low? I don't think so. No. I mean, let me. Um... And, and most of that is for. Carry on, carry on. Most of that is for you know, um, mem memory. Like you can re you can hear it once and probably remember it. I like the lilting beginning with the orchestra. The thing is, there are things that I like about the fact that it's got this. Uh... Vals <laughs> tempo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But there's not much in the orchestra. It goes. I do. I do quite like the fact that it does that. Was I in the right key? That is amazing. men. Yeah. So this, this starts off in quite a kind of fun, declamatory way, doesn't it? Mm. Hail men, safeguards of your nation. I played Little Buttercup, or rather, I played Little Robocup. Oh, was that in Starship? At the University Pinnacle. of St Andrews. I'm going to try and find a picture and put it right here. Interestingly, mm. earlier when I was looking up Captain Shaw to remind myself who he was, the first Captain Shaw that comes up is from Star Trek. And then you have to look oh, further down to find Captain Shaw, the uh, the captain of the Metropolitan Fire. So. Mm. I think it actually is one of the more tuneful Alto mm. arias. Yes, this is yeah. true. There were definitely, and we'll get into this later, but the, mm. let's say the ones in the back end that I don't know as well. Yeah. God, it's hard to find a hook. And like, you, can, yeah. you can't deny that this is memorable. Mm. If I was performing this, would my friends be like, oh my God, what an amazing job you did with that solo. For this, probably not. It's not memorable. I mean, I remember doing this at a concert that much exposition a while ago. It. And it's just... It's like, here's who I am. I'm a character. I sell things. Yeah. Well, let's say, so thinking about music... <laughs> You say you give it a 10. I probably have given it a 12 okay. because I do kind of think it's pretty enough to get a 12. Mm -hmm. So that means we could have fall comfortably at 11. Fair. So let's give it an 11 for music. But like, how? what do we think about the lyrics, like the poetry of the lyrics? I don't think it's very poetic. I mean, it's what are, what are the, what I've are the snuff rhymes? I've and tobacco. Tobacco and, and excellent, excellent Jackie. Jackie. I've scissors and watches and knives. I like I've the ribbons and laces, ribbons and laces set off the face, face of the pretty young sweet hearts and wives. That's a nice line. I think it's 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 certainly not Gilbert's best, but I don't no. think it's near, anywhere near his worst. Um, no. I do I do and that's kind of for me the chromatic bit. I treacle and toffee, I've tea and I've mm -hmm. coffee. I mean, it is quite fun. Right. It is quite fun to sing succulent chops. I thought I you were going to say that's quite funky. No. <laughs> So, sorry, would I bring that modern parlance into our discussion of operetta? <laughs> I probably would. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think uh, it's quite fun to say soft Tommy and succulent chops. Oh. Maybe it's more fun to say than say. I've said I've chickens and cornies and pretty balonies. It's sexy. You know it I mean? can be. The things she's saying are not sexy, but the... Come and but the music money, is quite sexy. I always think, I always think of um, Buttercup as quite a buxom woman. Even if she, yeah. I don't know if she is or not. Maybe it's because our first Buttercup. But the was thing quite is, she is awesome. so loved. Like mm. in contrast to Ruth, like Buttercup oh, is really yeah. loved by the sailors. And what? And I think like the best thing you can do with this song is just like, which sadly I was unable to do really when I was directing because I I had so many restrictions with COVID you when were, I was directing uh, this yeah. like a few years ago. Um, but uh, it, to to me, like I imagine like 
Buttercup is just so wholesomely loved by the whole crew. And it's in and maybe she's kind of flirting a bit with them, mm. but you know, it's it's a very sweet, lovely thing. And it seems like, see her so as like matronly, or is it kind of, is it good maybe. nature? Does I good think that nature depends on the of... actor. Because I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I had when I directed it for Ungsak, I had like the most stunning lady ever playing her. She was just like gorgeous Stunkle and plus. like, and so I you you couldn't really I couldn't really go that angle. Um, but yeah, but with the but with the lyrics, I mean, w would you give them any more than a six out of ten? Do you think? six is right do you think yeah. maybe even a five i don't know i mean yeah i think six seems fair because yeah it's... i think that it's decent enough that it gets a six but meh. they just don't say very much yeah they but don't say very much and they're not political here is one that i feel may um be a bit of a disappointment mm. emotional slash comedic impact i think that would entirely depend on the actor I'm sorry. I don't think well. you could get any. What emotion can you get? Out How of that? many opportunities does it provide for um, people? Comedic, barely. Um, maybe if she leans into that slightly clumsy or slightly sexy thing, it could mm. be made more interesting by the sailors' reactions to what yeah. she does. But then but that's it's very the much in the hands of the the, the, the person. Yeah. Comes. Do we do, do do the words and the music evoke? any kind of emotion in you hunger <laughs> no that's Hunger's not that's not an emotion. an emotion no not really i mean to be honest like this is it's i guess it's kind of the only thing that but this is a stretch that's kind of funny is just like that like the the lyrics maybe the of, patriotism like, like, like just well, I wasn't even thinking of the patriotism. I was just thinking of like the fact that she is listing off quite banal things, mm -hmm. um, and excellent peppermint. No, it's I, not, I, I just, I was just thinking the rest it stirs more in me than the aria because the hey, men of wars, men, safeguards of your nation. Like she feels, oh, they're looking after like that is yeah. almost emotional. <laughs> in fact, and actually, the reality of it is quite. It's like a little slice of life mm. moment. So. I get that, that I guess it does evoke a ah oh, kind of feeling of warmth. Yeah. I guess that's what it does. So that is something, but I don't think it's at all funny. Three, two out of twenty. I think so. I mean I was thinking more like a four or five, but uh, yeah. Well we like, can be generous, that's that's say four. Because I think it does it you, it does evoke a feeling of kind of warmth. It's familiar, but is that because of the text or is that because we know because the song is in the zeitgeist and we know it and therefore we're like, yeah. oh, nostalgic for Pinafore and nostalgic yeah. for the early work. I mean, to be honest, I don't know if it does deserve much more than a three. What we can do is we can give it a three for now mm. and then once we finish the list, we can, th we can think, was that fair? Was that and we may up the mark. But I think, honestly, even out of 20, there's just like nothing much in it. And the thing mm. is, the reason I made that um, emotional comedic impact, the reason I made that such a big mark category is that that just seems to encapsulate a lot of these arias mm -hmm. and that seems to be the main thing about these they're either arias. they're either a showstopper and like a comedy vehicle for the actress or it is the big private emotional moment that Absolutely. they experience usually by themselves mm. and when they're not it does feel a bit flat and so yeah here we go narrative slash character importance what how well does this song serve the story and buttercup's character know that it oh obviously it's necessary because we need to get buttercup on board so yeah. we had to have a way to get her on board but in terms of her character i think more is revealed of her through dialogue and some of her interactions with yeah other people yeah. and like maybe in different songs mm. as well but i i do appreciate that it is a good vehicle for the actor to show that so while yeah. it may not be in the words it and, and I, I i do think that it it does tell us, it tells us that the sailors think of her warmly, that she mm. has a good relationship with the people on this ship. I think it does tell us a few things about her and it also just helps set up this kind of slice of life mm. idea that I think surrounds HMS Pinafore, yeah. this like day in the life of this ship and this is a thing that happens every day. She comes on board and does mm. this. So I think that, I mean, I, w I would say it deserves, could have probably like a five out of 10, probably not, you know, much yeah. more than that. Maybe a six, I don't could know. Could Pinafore function without it? Would it make a difference if Buttercup just came on board and they said, ah, Buttercup, I the think she needs woman. a song. She needs a song. So I think it is a six. Mm. I think if this wasn't there, 
it would feel very yeah, odd that she just was like, there. This lady just wandered onto the deck. Yeah, Who may she be? Uh, I, I think it would feel very flat if this mm. song didn't happen. So ha, even if we also don't... it's short. Yeah, and I and maybe we can talk about this. That also arias mm-hmm. for me seem to fall into one of two categories. Far too short or far too long. Stupidly long. <laughs> like, which is some we're going to get oh, to God. later. And you're like, really? Another verse? Oh, face ranger. Oh, face ranger. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm glad we we're on the same page. <laughs> but yeah, I would say it probably gets a six for that. And then we got two more categories to talk about. Gosh. So we got enjoyment. Like, do you enjoy this song? I mean, as much watching as you it, I enjoy it. it about as much as I enjoy watching a rerun of like. Friends or Brooklyn Nine Nine, something that I'm familiar with, but there are no surprises. It's comforting. It's comforting. Da, 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 no surprises. Radiohead. You guys might not know this, but Radiohead is literally my favourite band. Are they? Yeah, literally. I have really? other like favourite artists. Like I, I'm obsessed with Joni Mitchell. Mm. I, nicest but thing I anyone say ever Radiohead said to me like about my non-operatic uh, mm. singing. Um, I performed a song I wrote an open mic night and someone said they rem- I reminded them of Joni Mitchell. Oh my god, I was I was also so twenty that. and they were probably trying to, you know, oh my god. flatter me. But I so. but I only got into her maybe like three years ago. Oh she's great. But I am obsessed with Joni Mitchell. I've got like an encyclopedia no, and There's a great um episode have you seen the episode of New Girl where Jess I've not seen New Girl. Oh my god. Oh. Jess uh you have to watch it. Jess gets um dumped and she's listening to River by Joni Mitchell. <sighs> And then oh. at first the flatmates are annoyed and they're like, okay, we get it. I wish this lady would sail away and, you know, drown. Yeah, I wish and, then, so and then she stops playing it. And then they go, no, wait, keep playing it. I get it now. It's about escape. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a river. I could skate away on. I mean, my baby, say goodbye. Oh my God, it's so good. Joni Mitchell by way of High School Musical. As you say, you know, it's it's like a nice kind of comforting thing. No surprises. That's how we got our side. I, I would put around a ten, maybe slightly less. Out of ten? Oh, it's out of ten. Oh, sorry, I thought it was out of twenty. <laughs> yeah, I'm just throw the ratings to the to the winds. Like, see what six. No, let's, sorry. Oh, it's out of ten. For a nice five. A five. Let's for a fair yes. five. Yes. Cultural longe- cultural wow. longevity. I mean, however. why do you think I invented the category? The thing is, if if we look ahead at all the songs mm. in this list. Does any song Come have as close. much cultural longevity as this song? If you, if this were a category on like um, uh, tenable, and it was like you had to name ten alto arias, would anyone name more than like this one? This, I mean, to me, if there's going to be this one is ten in the, this list, yeah, this is this the ten. Is it. Yeah, so I'm going to give this one the ten. Yeah. So yeah, that's us finished. Finished with with, with Buttercup. Number, Number thirteen is Boldface Ranger, Ranger from. Utopia Limited. I'm playing okay. with cat beams, I'm sorry. This so, what do we think of Bold Faced Ranger, ladies and gentlemen? So, I have no real solid Utopia knowledge. I know that's a terrible thing to admit on a GNS channel, but like, I've never no, been in a production. Cool. I've never had the chance to see a production. Yeah, that's cool. I've seen some kind of racist looking pictures, not gonna lie. <laughs> um, I've seen some kind of racist. And I heard some of it when we did the marathon, but I had to go to the mm. shop to buy important provisions. Yeah. So I missed a lot of it. I yeah. came back to this amazing tenor singing, um, oh. tenor singer as well. It was, was that Clay, it was Clay Hilly. Hilly. It was wonderful. He, he was fabulous. Amazing. He was so much fun. Um, he's also really funny on Facebook. Oh, he's great. Him and uh, his lovely wife, yeah. uh, I want to say it's called Sarah, were singing Joe Spin and Rave that. together. Oh, and they yes. were brilliant. Oh, they were that. That so wonderful. Um, Bullface Ranger. Mm. I don't hate the tune of this. Dude, it's, 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 it's quite different. exciting. It's different yeah. to a lot of Sullivan. Dun, 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 dun. It's got movement. Dun, 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 but if I had to tell you what it was about, I actually could. It's like a kind of creepy fairground. <laughs> yeah. Dun, 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 is this, dun, dun, so is she introducing dun, dun, dun. Paramount to the girls? No, nah, so, no. What it is, I, is yeah. that um, this is like a skit that mm. they have planned, right. whereby Paramount is presenting his two youngest daughters to the Nikaya people of Utopia, Kalibar. exactly, who have been um, finished by an right. English lady. Like so Lady kind of Sophie kind of goes round all the kings of kind of, of like foreign different lands, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. and um, yeah, different islands and things, and and kind of coaches 
their daughters in the ways of the English because her goal is to find, um, her, her, yeah, her goal is to find like the perfect king, and so because she that that's that the her only person, goal? yeah, well, that that is the only person who she can conceive falling in love with. Okay, like a, a, but a, a blameless is a, king. Is it a self-imposed contrivance? Like, has she has she said I'm resolved not to be in love yes, until I find absolutely. the perfect? Okay, absolutely. Okay, so there's nothing stopping her from like actually meeting someone. No, except her own no, no, ridiculous no, no. Exactly. standards. Ladies, don't have too high standards. I'm only kidding. Your standards should be really, really. I'm gonna high. say, yeah, never like, settle for have anyone. Your, have your standards, standards really, really sky high because if well, it's not even so much standards, just like like preferences, just like just because, like know your worth. Yeah, and by that um, I mean if someone ridicules you or is not kind to you, then get out. Then of get there. out of there. Um, yeah, because you're amazing and you're because Rachel and I said so, and we're both playing with her hair now. This is the time in the evening where I get restless. Can you imagine if this was what people did with their hair? Oh my god. They could in your Catan. Who knows what people do with their hair? And that li- a little I don't think mine's there. long enough. Like, 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 that, that looks like a coconut. So, anyway. You can even separate <laughs> in the back. I know, looking That's at the I like that though. This, well, Face Ranger, I can tell you, it's, it's fine. <laughs> it's very long. I, I have no strong That feelings. is my issue musically. <laughs> is it, the thing is, it's cool. Is it a 14 it, or a 13? Oh, you're going higher than I was going to go. Uh, 13. Yeah. Because it's, I appreciate that it's from gl- 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 this stuff brewing and it's quite... It it's does a bit work of, better I at a lick. Pretty, like when, so it pretty. did. When we did it in um, for <laughs> Utopia <laughs> Opera, Will took it at such a lick. Yeah. Buffy Springer, perfect stranger, met two well-behaved young ladies. And that was kind of exciting. Because it's another story one, isn't it? It's another yeah. expositiony kind of um, one. And I'd Ish. say it does nothing for Lady Sophie's character. What other than show her that this is the kind of person who would... Um, impose this upon other people mm. like so that's kind of about her like she's a but then stickler also, for morals and it's things. just a great set piece so i'd say it's <laughs> not i would maybe say it's like a six kind of sure. narrative character importance because it, it is in keeping with yeah. the theme of the play but it's not like vital to the story yeah, yeah, yeah it's pretty fair. i think it's pretty good um emotional comedic impact i mean it's one of those ones that's kind of gently funny it's like yeah. oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, chuckle yeah you're probably not laughing at but that i mean i probably wouldn't give it a, give it more than like an eight or nine it is kind mm. of cute, and it does. It is a vehicle for some. Oh, that's a good idea. It is a yeah. I'm it is still in the dark. It is like a vehicle for some comedy. What do you think? The song or the light? Both. Light. I think the general. light. Oh, the think? light. The light. Think the light. The light is very wobbly. Yeah, sadly, my ring light seems to be. We're dead. too hot, Rachel. The and plug got too hot. The plug got too hot. It's fine. I'm slightly. I think it's fine. We can in. always brighten it. Um, we'll, we'll fix it in post. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I don't feel too attached to it. It doesn't stir much in me. No. Five, six. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Are you gonna go higher? Uh, me, should you settle on a seven? Seven. That's the same as come mighty must. Yeah, that feels right. That feels, feels right. Like a concept that could be executed well, depending. Then lyrics, poetry. Bodface Ranger, to a perfect stranger, meets two well behaved young ladies. He's attractive, young and active, each a little bit afraid is. It's a Jamie Foyce score. It's Why like you a got cr- Jamie Foyce score. I don't know. I think I just hate Maybe Jamie Foy and stole his score. That's probably the most likely explanation. I'm sorry, Jamie. But um, um would you say it gets a six for lyrics? It's like a mm, or five, it's like a bit. It's a the rhymes of, are a bit cringe. What do you think? Um, he's done that thing where sometimes he he splits infinitives. His rank discloses. Yeah, I I mean I find it a little bit shoehorn the rhymes, a bit yeah. contrived. But I hate it, so I'd probably give it no, a five. Yeah, it's maybe. fine. It's very middle of the road for me. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just consulting. That. And then. Yeah, the only ones we have to go are enjoyment and cultural longevity. I mean, is this one that people in the community like, love and talk about? And I wouldn't the, have thought so. And is its message? Its message about the uh, its message about the arbitrar- uh, arbitrariness of etiquette mm. is kind of a good one. So it's kind it's, of fun. There's, there's that like poking fun kind of exactly. Element. And. So I would probably give it like a six for cultural longevity because yeah, I think it's, 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 it's yeah. got like a kind of it's got, message it's got and a presence. Like it's got, you know. 
And then enjoy, but enjoyment, I'd probably say a four, honestly, yeah. because I'm, I'm usually so bored in this one, to be yeah. honest. I, when it comes on, I'm like, yeah. Ah. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh. And then okay. it keeps going, and then I checked five, yeah. and when I saw five minutes, I thought, oh, there's probably dialogue after it, and then it, she went into like the third verse, like, exactly. Oh, okay, no, this is just long. Word. Word. Number, Number 12, 12 is, is like, when our gallant Norman. Foes. I don't have any foes called Norman. So yeah, what what are your thoughts on this aria? <coughs> I have complex feelings about it. I think. Yeah, I've never played. Um, oh my gosh, I forgot her name. I wanted to say Dame, Dame Hannah. Carruthers. Dame Hannah. It's the other Dame. There's nothing like a Dame. Um, I've never played Dame Carruthers. I played yeah. Phoebe. Um, and we haven't done it again yet. Yes. Um, yet. Uh, I didn't used to like this one very much i thought it yeah. was a bit dull um and maybe that's still the case however there are moments where i really love the intensity like um the storm may twist and the rack may turn oh yeah absolutely like that escalation like i really enjoy the musicality of it um and it really, it's like what we were saying about how Sir Rupert Murgatroyd oh is, is like the scene painting for Rudigor. And this almost for me is like yeoman scene painting. Like, yeah. it, it like, to me, feels attached to Tower Warders. Oh, because, absolutely. Because there's Tower yeah. Warders, which is the townspeople and the yeoman's, um, uh, like, opinion or, or view, the slice of life. And then there's Dame Hannah, who has a very different responsibility. You know, she's she's saying, well, I'm going to give you the history. Oh, are we now beautiful? Because we have a ring light. I don't know how really where to put it. Fish breath, barbecue fingers, ring light face. That's kind of... Yes, Kitty, that's right. It is a light. <laughs> this is how I should film the Mikado dialogue. I should film it in this light. All of you. Oh, you should yes. do the... I am indeed beautiful. I am indeed beautiful. Oh, that would be cute. And maybe you should have a little minion like holding it for Sometimes you. Sometimes sit and wonder. Do I can't say that. In your artless <gasps> Catanese way. Yeah, Catanese way. Catan. Why it is that I am so much more attractive than anyone else in the whole world? Can this be vanity? Oh, that's cute. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> nature is lovely and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature. I take after my mother. It's a bit slow. I the thing is, I, I am completely sorry, I couldn't really respond because I was positioned trying to plug the ring light in. But I was, I, I am completely with you that musically the best bit of it is the bit where the men come in. That is, the clash you see, is that is nice. Yeah. That is like goosebumpy bit mm -hmm. but the actual verses themselves the words don't it's a bit it's much. a bit conservative for me yeah. it's not it's it's very ba -dum, ba -dum, yeah. ba -dum. it's very kind of it's almost militaristic in a way patriotic so i think it is i do like it musically mm -hmm. but it would only be it's like a favorite. 15 for me yeah, i think it's solid yeah. i think it's, it's much more interesting than buttercup like a foolish fate that's fair yeah I think definitely. that's fair definitely. isn't it yeah let's let's give her a 15 for that how about the poetry of the lyrics? The screw may twist and the rack may turn and men may bleed and men may burn at London Tower and its golden hoard. I keep my silent watch and watch. I like the yeah. words of the chorus. I think mm. the verses don't do much for me. When I gallant on phone with Mary... Like, I struggle to remember second. the second verse. It no. is a bit like this happened. Yeah, yeah, this happened. It's this not particularly is beautiful, is it? No. Like a six but then, probably. The, but the poeticness, I think, of the chorus, that I is, like. So maybe, yeah, maybe so a seven. Six, six seven. I think a seven. You're right, the chorus is really mm. good. But then, yeah, okay, we get emotional comedic <coughs> impact. This is a bit of a troubling one for me. Yeah, she's one. not funny. It's mm. not funny. I think it does tell you a little bit about Dame Hannah and... So that's more like character. But yeah, it's character. It? It's not... I mean, there aren't really stakes in this song. There are that's hypothetical thing. stakes for, like, the people who might think about I guess something you wrong. get some kind of empathetic... It seems like like, like, she's, pr like pride from maybe I'm wrong. Her she singers. seems like yeah the the like um, long suffering like oh it's my job to look after everything mm. like I need to but be also here. she is All she dependable. is so proud mm. and dignified about but this and she fiercely loves this building and maybe but maybe it's, it's a bit of a stretch to actually say yeah, that I really I feel with her 
This is like 20. I'm thinking like a five. Yeah, honestly. It's pretty like, paltry. It's, it's got like a bit, but. I don't really think I've ever loved much. anything as and much it's as not, she loves this job. It's not even slightly funny. Oh, there are zoomies going on above us, yeah. Dan's got. Um, them, yeah, but then kind of narrative character importance. What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, I think it introduced us her. We kind of. Yeah. We get. We get I'm to, just interested. This is the only. Interested bit of you didn't put in her. Night Has Spread Her Pool. Because it has chorus bits, but I guess it has more chorus bits. To me, bits. that's going yeah. firmly in the oh, act two openness me. category. Oh, of course. So, yeah, there's just the category. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, if I watched your videos more diligently, I would have known that. No, no because no, that's that's thing. actually something that yeah, I decided yeah. recently, because I actually included I Once Was As Meek As A Newborn Lamb as a duet, <laughs> but I think in hindsight it should be in the openness. But One yeah, of my favourites, and I know a lot of people don't like it, but I really enjoy the melodrama of it, and I think if acted oh, well, yeah. it's quite enjoyable. Absolutely. And it gives you the wonderful, mm. if you've had a set change or scene change, it yeah. gives you the wonderful like character flip, which is nice. Mm. Um, yeah, I think uh, we're doing... Like, I think it's like four? fairly relevant five? to the story character. Yeah, I think it's a it's, five out of ten yeah, is, is good. It, we're think. not getting huge amounts of plot from it, but... But it's like, it's setting the scene yes, well, you know? Painting. And it's, there should be a song there. Mm -hmm. Enjoyment. I, do you know, in the right thing, I would enjoy the chorus and I'd feel stirred by it. But again, yeah. this isn't, I'm not going to put this on and go, what about... It's like it? four like, territory for me. Yeah. Four or five. Four or five, yeah. It'd be nice to give it a five just because it's musically so good. And then cultural longevity. So mm -hmm. how is is the message interesting? Is this something that has survived in the community as in, like a iconic I don't know about song? The community. I think in mm -hmm. general, if you think about Joe Blogs, Joe Public, they probably feel this way about being the UK. I don't personally feel this way, but maybe mm. they feel... The thing is, because Gilbert like, usually kind of like punches up at patriot yeah, exactly. patriotism, so it's odd to hear him almost punching... It's very stirring, you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. there doesn't seem to be any tongue-in-cheekness in this, so I don't know. This I mean, is I'm not sure it could be played aged, like, that way. Well. It could be played that way because, you know, the screw may twist and the rat may turn. Like, it could be played in a kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I prefer it er mm -hmm. in earnest, I think. In earnest. Are you in earnest? I'm completely in earnest. Should we give it that a four? Yeah. Number, Number 11, 11 is... A Many Years Ago from... HMS, HMS Pinafore. Pinafore. So this is Buttercup's second mm. aria. I mean, I know it has chorus responses, but no, I'm including but, it as an aria. But I think you include it as an aria. Yeah. And I'd, I'd forgotten about this one. Let's, when um, I... let's turn around oh, so oh, we're, we're oh, looking oh, at this dang. way. So let's, uh, and come. Come. Ooh, come and let us look at this. Well, just, do you play the piano better than me, by the way? No, I do not. Okay, right. Because I do not... I. I am, so I always say that I am living proof that the grading system means nothing because I, I actually have a grade eight, in, wow. I pass my grade eight piano. But I think but I'm being really able to play, play grade eight standard and being able to sight read are two different skills. Oh, I know you're not technically yeah, sight yeah, reading yeah. because you know the songs, but... But it starts yeah. off, but listen, like, get a load of this. Ugh. It starts off with this amazing... <laughs> You know that? that oh, I've, got, I've, got, I've literally got goosebumps. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not a player. But like, <laughs> and, and then it's and it's just sort of wonderful staccato, like, yeah. A many years ago, when I was young and charming. So good, isn't it? I love it. I, I actually am a real fan of a chorus response, and this the whispered kind of. This actually feels it's like a secret. Yeah, that's why it's so magical. Let's do it, let's do it. This is Lois Alarming. When she was young and charming, she practiced baby farming and many years ago. It's cool. Mm. That's not really part of the To tend to babes I nursed. Nust, not nursed. Always really funny. Altos don't often get to show off, let's say, vocally in the same way mm, as mm. sopranos or coloratura. Um, and so giving them either interesting text or fun character mm. is usually um, what they get instead. But actually, this is a nice opportunity to show I've got power, I've got heft, Think I can sing an E. Up across, and then it's, I reckon you love patrician. So I, I think I prefer really the lyrics fun. in this as well. Ooh, and you know what? There's no way on this earth, I'll be able to play this, but... Oh, where are you going from? So yeah, 
yeah, it wasn't that wasn't in time. <laughs> no, <laughs> da, 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 da. That, 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 that chord. I'm gonna trip, see if I can play that. Answers in the comments. So Rachel and I did a concert in a four at the university, and our alto was on book and had never sung um, Pinafore before. And she went, "That newborn babe was Ralph," <laughs> and it was amazing. Interestingly enough, like I, I actually really appreciate this one, and I think it's really quite cool. But I, I, I can also. I also understand that like H was Pinafore isn't people's favourite, it's not like got the most dramatic ever. So let's go through it category by category. Music. Considering that we gave Little Buttercup that aria an eleven, what do you think this one deserves? Is it a bit more interesting? I think musically it's interesting, but it is also repetitive. So it, mm. it's quite it's very diff different to Buttercup. Yeah. Um I don't know, where are you coming from on this? Uh I think I would, pro I would probably I think it might score say... higher in other categories, I think. I mean, I, mm. I might, I might actually, the thing is, I think it deserves more than I'm called Little Buttercup. Oh, really? But I would but probably think... give it an 11, so I'm thinking that's maybe I should, we should actually Buttercup alter Buttercup. So let's change her to a 10, yeah. and then maybe put this yeah. at an 11, because I think that we've got a long way to go. Yeah. And because there are some the that are going to be so good later. Yeah. So, um, but we, might, we can always change it. The poetry, though. It's a bit cringe, isn't it? Uh, some of the some of the line uh, the rhymes are a little bit forced. A little bit contrived, aren't they? Um, I'm not a massive fan of the poetry in this one. The, and it's, I like the word patrician. Nice however, word. could you do it someday? No doubt she'll rue it. it. Although no creature knew it. I, I I would say this is probably a four for me on lyrics. A four out of ten. Sure. I'm, I find it a bit like. Oh, someone's got someone got a rhyming dictionary for Christmas, you know. <laughs> a bit like that. Well, there's one that I was listening to earlier, uh, which is coming up in a while. That I was like, really, really, we're doing we're doing a, a quadruple rhyme for this. Yeah, word that should not have that many rhymes for it. Mm -hmm. We'll get into it. Oh, nice. Watch me not remember this later, Rachel. Can you put like a voice over here? If I didn't remember, it'd be like oh, I'm gonna I shame to you. Yourself. I'm gonna shame you in a caption that's gonna appear. Right here. Emma forgot. <laughs> it could just be a caption for my life, honestly. Yeah, and if you do remember, I'll still put something there. Something amusing. Lovely. Yeah. Emotional comedic impact. Oh. I mean... I got goosebumps when yeah. you were half playing the piano. It does give me a little something. I get, I get a bit of go I get a bit goosebumpy for it, but like... Um, at this point of... So, let's... I was thinking like, historically. When I listen to this... Am I coming from a place of, um, oh, I, oh, oh, the old baby swapping thing, that's original. Or am I an audience member in 18, insert when HMS Pinafore. 77? 8? Am I an audience Don't member in the late 1800s? No, because Sorcerer was 1877. So Pinafore would have been 1878 or there. So... Am I me coming at this from, oh, I know Gina, it's the old baby swap, ha ha ha, it's not that exciting, not that yeah. unpredictable. Or am I an audience goer in the late 1800s, barely ever seen an opera, what is this new flash operetta at the Savoy? And I go in and I'm like, oh my God, she mixed them up. Like, would I actually be surprised? Would Does the music help me feel actually surprised by the outcome? The thing is, I think this is one of those things where... What the audience thinks is their own business. But as a performer and they a director... They love to tell you, though. <laughs> as a performer, director and choruses, you have to approach this, like, not in, like, a tongue-in-cheek way. Mm. Like, that the actors can't be, like... Jokey. jokey aware yeah. of that. That the show can't be too aware of itself. Because that just completely takes away all the magic mm. of it. Because I think... But I do, I do totally <laughs> agree because uh, I think this was kind of the, like, the, the point you were making, I totally agree that the fact that it is a contrivance, and I think by mm. this point we've probably got a bit of an idea about what is going on, I think that does definitely lessen the emotional impact it yeah. could have had. But at the same time, if we really put ourselves in the place of like, Rafe and Josephine, who are truly one of the most in love couples mm. in GNS, like the most 
like purely in love, very romantic couples in GNS who you're really, really rooting for. Mm. And they have just been split and separated and the crew is feeling really downhearted, mm -hmm. like they have just been completely put in their place class-wise. And then this revelation comes up. There's absolutely no reason why this shouldn't be really, really moving mm -hmm. and exciting and properly putting people on the edge of their seat. And the way that it's been orchestrated, I think musically gives that. So as long as the, mm. the chorus, as long as the company give it the whispered diction it deserves, Absolutely, like, it's about the chorus it is, as well. As it, it, I think it almost as much as what she's saying, it's mm. how they're responding to it. And as you say, they need to respond to it with a certain authenticity rather than going, mm. oh, well, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. The old, yeah, like, the, oh, 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 horror. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, th that's just not, I, I, I just, I, 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 I am very much champion, championing people all people truth. of all kinds doing GNS and having fun mm. with it. But there are some things that I must admit when I see irritate me. And that is when people Chorus, don't respect the material. Like when people try and do a kind of nudge, nudge, wink, wink. I know what I'm saying is ridiculous kind of performance. Like you have to believe what you're saying. Otherwise, mm. why are you doing it? You know, come on. It's like you have to, you have, the characters have to themselves have conviction about what they're saying otherwise what on earth are you doing putting mm. on theatre you can take that to the bank as well as your fish breath and your barbecue <laughs> things so you know, i would honestly but like i do think that the fact that it is a contrivance does mean it has slightly less of an emotional impact it's like you don't feel the same as some of the other ones but i'd still give it maybe like a 10 or an 11. yeah i mean it, it got a it elicited a response from me in terms of i got goosebumps but i think that's just the intensity mm. of the whispers and the beautiful nature of that uh funky chord you played um mm. and i use funky because i don't know what kind of chord it was um yeah i yeah i think a 10 or 11 is fair yeah. i think an 11 because like yeah, yeah I, I i i do think it does it it does if deserve, played I... correctly sung and, and acted correctly i think it can be powerful absolutely and what are we thinking about? Well, hey, narrative character importance. Oh, how important is this to the literally, story? Literally. Absolutely vital. Um, it's the kernel. It kind like this song is actually one of those rare ones where it's not a finale mm. yet. Proper story is like being it is. divulged. Yeah, we've got, it's like the Arquebus yeah. song in Yeoman. It's like stuff oh, is actually yeah, yeah, happening. Yeah. Things are being revealed. Mm -hmm. People are in saying things which you are listening to. So, I mean, I might even give it a 10, actually. I, I, I think it kind of needs a 10. Because if you cut this song out, it wouldn't make a lick of sense. Mm -hmm. A lick of sense. <laughs> Not a lick. But how about enjoyment and cultural longevity? What, what do you think about those? I mean, I do enjoy it, but I wouldn't mm. listen to it on repeat on Spotify like I would with some of the other arias on this list. How about, so considering we gave Buttercup a five, what do, what do you think that That's kind of... Less than that, I think. Do you think? I mean, yeah. I personally enjoy it more, but I understand that I'm probably in the minority if, if you were asked, what's your favourite auto aria yeah. from Pinafore? I mean, I don't think, when I think of... <laughs> what's funny is when you look at when you looked at my spotify like your year and breakdown oh yeah the thing is it, this is a bit unfair because it was a <clears> show <throat> i was directing but the song i'd listened to more than any other song was here we are at the risk of our lives oh i got God. really into that song i got yeah i got well into that song and you had Absolutely a lot of better. choreography for it it I is. Did. I Absolutely. and I was properly thinking about that one mm. for, for a very long time. But like, yeah, I don't think I've ever like listened to this song for pleasure. No, but, you know, it's fun when it comes around. I you'd like skip it, it on a, if it was on a GNS mix. You'd probably skip it. I'd give it a four though, because I think I have a four. certain amount. I have a if like one point. is if zero is I do not like this song, mm. and then everything from there is like incremental like so yeah. it's not as if anything yeah. below a five and, you I, don't think, enjoy. and I think that's it's important to say because yeah. like i'm probably going to score some of these low and it doesn't mean yeah. i dislike it necessarily i just don't think it's and i think that's important because otherwise in fact that's even maybe i'm a, a gms lover not maybe, a hater. maybe it's actually a three if we, if we think about one as being it's got something some merit then i think it's probably a three okay. how about cultural longevity does do people know about this one? I don't, I don't think this is yeah. a famous one. I mean, I guess people know about in the community GNS do people talk about having it? baby swapping type things. Like it's one of those mm. old tropes. 
honestly, like this one doesn't really seem to be on the cultural radar, but mm. just because it's an HMS Pinnacle, I think it automatically has to get like at least a five just because it's yeah, like, sure. it's in one of the big three. Sure. And so, but does it, I don't think it gets any more than a five though. I think that sounds fair. So I think that's, that's probably fair. Um, the only reason it probably has survived is because it, it's Buttercup's other song and she has probably like the most famous song on this list. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's have those as our scores for that song. Exciting. Number, Number 10, 10 is... Oh, would some demon power slash when but a maid. Also from Utopia Limited. Yeah. Or the flowers that progress. Progress. So progress. first of all, I think musically, this is way better than her other one. Um, yeah. I like the ploddingness of it. It's a bit like, it's a really it's like Silver Does like the Raven Hair. Raven Hair. And like, this is what I thought. <coughs> I don't know that <coughs> I'd listen when to this. But I'm made of 15 I think I might have heard this mm. twice before <coughs> yesterday when I started listening to this. But I'd, I'd say it is a good either 14 or 15 for me. Yeah, but I think, I do less, think it's pretty. It's less than Silver Does the Raven Hair. I think it's yeah, around the sure. Foolish Bay mark. In that it's pleasant and it it has that very yeah, that's similar. 15. I'd say it's probably not quite as good, maybe a fourteen. I think and, it has that yeah. similar auto vibe of my youth was my worth. You know, it's it's again. Well, it's just well, about, I love you know. the well, well. It's so sad. Mm. I, I this this Resigned. song this song really moves me in a way that it's 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 like so not all tragedies in life are kind of terrible, earth shattering mm. things that mm -hmm. happen to us. Sometimes things just creep up on us and it kind of slowly dawns on us that something's the truth. And, and sometimes very profound that can be sad. the most profound, poignant thing mm -hmm. of all. Like, I, I, it does, it's tremendously poignant, this song. Mm -hmm. And it's not really funny, but, you know, I would give it... Uh, I, I Honestly, I'd give it a decent 15, maybe mm -hmm. even a 16 for, like, it's emotional. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it... For me, it splits the difference sort of between Silver Does the Raven Hair and like Alone and Yet Alive. It's yeah. Very much yeah, the lyrics, I think, um, when I think they're pretty, but the poetry doesn't blow me away. So I'll probably mm. say something like a six. But the, the, yeah. I think the words are nice. But it just feels like a less clever version of other That's ideas he's already expressed. Yeah. Let's like it feels like it feels like Silver Does the Raven Hair Part 2. Oh, would some demon power the gift in part to quell my over conscientious heart? Like what why do I feel it's, it's Captain Shaw. Why all why over do again. I feel so profoundly but yet so specifically? Yeah. Why why are my standards so high? And mm. speak the oaths that never had been spoken and break the vow that never shall be broken. I mean that that's a bit emo, I know what you mean. And that's also When but a maid of fifteen year, unsought, unplighted. Short petticoated and I fear still shorter sighted. And she was short coated. I made a vow one early spring that only to some spotless king who proof of blameless life could bring, I'd be united. I like that. For I had read not long before of blameless kings in fairy lore, and thought the race and thought the race still flourished. I was but a maid of fifteen years. She I think that's nice. really sweet. I think we can relate to that. Each morning Maybe. I pursued my game. An early riser. For spotless monarchs I became an advertiser. But all in vain I searched each land so kingless to my native strand, returned a little older and a good deal wiser. I learnt that spotless modern. king and prince had disappeared some ages since. In paramount's angelic grace is but a mask on nature's face. Ah me, ah me. It's but a mask on nature's face. I think it's relatable. I think it's really cute. Like... I I honestly I maybe even give her a nine. Okay. I don't know. I I'm into it. Hmm. Thing is, I think that maybe some of those marks should have gone into the em emotional mm -hmm. rather than the lyrics. I mean, I would say maybe I'd say maybe lyrics because it doesn't change the the mark. Mm -hmm. But the lyrics are probably an eight, and maybe the emotional sure. is more like a sixteen sure. than a fifteen. I think that kind of mm -hmm. would make me feel a bit better. But but then let's think about. Narrative character importance. I mean, it's completely relevant to the story, and I think it comes in like a bad place narratively because yeah. everyone is just so overwhelmed with stuff going on. They're like, they can't even take in any it's new information at this like point. It I think needs it's hard. to be there to give the audience a break and the characters a break. It's like a palate cleanser. But then I think everyone switches off in it. I think mm. it's very hard to make this one heard and understood. It was by the one audience. that I didn't. Yeah, it's know I really had like, a, out of 
I've had so much difficulty mm. actually keep maintaining the focus to understand this number and like getting it. I think it it smacks to me of what Lady Sanger's or Aria would have been. It's like a different shade smacks of that. Smacks of Grand Duke. Well, I was so naive back then, but maybe this has been my undoing. So it's nice for her character, but it's so, not like imperative. So maybe I, I'd I'd say five. Yeah, I think five is fair. Something Give her like middle a, of the road. yeah, not great for narrative, but pretty good for character. So five. Yeah. And then enjoyment, yeah, I, I say probably a three to be yeah, honest. I'm not, not just because like whenever this comes on, it does kind of ugh, you know. It, it's it's that of, sink, oh. like remember a drama teacher of mine used to say like you know. Some people hunch when they want to show that they're internalizing something, but then mm. that like deflates your energy. So you can't. Yes. So that like yeah. physicality is so important. So a song like this, the temptation might be to mm. almost internalize with your body. Yeah. And actually, it needs energy and it needs to be lifted at all times. Otherwise, yeah. it's just going to plod, 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 and come down. No, a hundred percent. Um, which I think is also true of their grew little flower, which yeah. if delivered incorrectly or like without enough actual emotion, mm -hmm. could just grind everything to a halt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And instead of keeping with, raising things, like yeah, keeping the ball going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with that in mind, kind of cultural longevity. So like, yeah, the message I think is a really good one. And uh, but I mean, who is it talk? Who, who I mean, are we talking it, to here? Is it saying you know, don't chase your life? Uh, don't spend your life chasing, chasing perfection, perfection because yeah. you can never attain that. Or, and now, like, but, back, or like the point was that actually Paramount was who she wanted all along, but she but she, but she had her walls or, were too yeah. high up for her to like realize that. So maybe the message is like let your barriers down, mm. like show people who you are, and Be like you. allow them to show you who they are. Yeah, and that's kind of quite nice. So I I give a, at least <coughs> a, a four me. or five for that, even though it's totally unknown. Maybe it earns a four just because. Yeah. It does have some. It kind reminds of me of like you know sometimes singers who are nervous or, mm. or inexperienced close their eyes when they sing because they they feel yes. the emotion. But when no, actually you want you're to... shutting off your emotion exactly. from the audience. Exactly. It's almost like she had Don't shut herself off. Don't close your eyes to love because then maybe in like pop that. music it's sometimes pretty yeah. cool, but like in music in musical theatre or opera, oh, I don't think. think I think that closing one's eyes is a really specific and like dangerous choice for an mm. actor to make. I think it's not good for your relationship with the audience. Especially in something like this yeah. where it's just a private moment between the character and the audience. It's so like a four for culture yeah, in terms of like message yeah. kind of I'll place be generous. Something. I think four is fair. Four. Four is fair. And that is a four. And that's oh. fair theatre. Uh -huh. That's all how, many four, how many bears? Four. Four. I I will admit that I didn't realise there were four bears hidden in your logo until I was studying the poster on the back of the toilets at uh, Hever Castle. I was being stared in the face by one of those and I was like, that's a really clever design choice. How many bears? Not ten. Not five. Do you know who designed that logo? Tony Bannister. Yeah. Who told me. Number, Number nine, nine is... <laughs> there grew a little flower. Neath the great oak tree. So this I, is from Rudigal. Yeah, my yeah. favourite. Back to my favourite musical. Back to your favourite one. <laughs> oh, sorry. Your favourite <laughs> musical. Yes. Yeah. If so, I had to pick my favourite musical. Have you? You haven't played Dame Hannah. Dame Hannah. Have I have you? not played Dame Hannah. Because I have played Dame Hannah, and that's oh why I'm not God. getting all the roles. You're I, taking them off. I I loved. I absolutely loved this song. She is uh, a fun character in that she gets some character bits mm. in the business with the tomcat and all that. She's quite cheeky. She can be. She's quite spicy. She's, she's feisty like a tomcat. I think that's what he says, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, my mm. only issue, I think musically it's pretty and I mm -hmm. enjoy it even more when Roderick joins in, just for I love an element of harmony. Mm. Um, <laughs> I am not a fan of the last minute song that grinds the show to an absolute halt before the finale especially yeah. when this finale is such a but that would be probably more for narrative than for music okay but so musically, musically i think it's pretty yeah i think it's a nice melody but ultimately it doesn't sustain my interest over okay. three verses because it is the same in three it verses now i give you that yeah yeah, yeah. um and would I, you say this is maybe on a par with silver does the raven hair then 
Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, I'm happy to I think that because Musically, I think I prefer Silver Does Already Have. Really... I know that you're fond of those, melodically. Yeah, I, I, there's things I really like about this, so I do think it deserves I just, a 16. What I prefer about Silver Does Already Have, I think, is the painting that is happening with the cello like imitation mm. in the yeah, that score. Is fun. Um, with this, I just think it's just... so like, sweepingly beautiful. It's like it one is, of those, but... it's one of those really gorgeous tunes and with harmonies and contrasting yeah, parts. I think la, la, if it's the so orchestra is good enough and if the altar oh. has a good enough voice, I just I don't know because the dialogue that mm. precedes it is so goofy. Like the no, but it's like sweet, but it's like it can yeah. be sweet goofy. It can be like yeah. um well maybe it's just I've seen you... play badly. Oh, <laughs> Roger, I also Dobby. just don't believe that anyone. Same would think because he died he didn't love her i know that's like romantic I just oh no but, but no it's just that she feels abandoned like, why is she going to have to do that to you bad bad boy it's it's like happened. she it's like she's trying to be cross with him but she can't mm. and i find that so cute and i i totally ship them i'm i'm there for dame hannah and roderick it's to me it's so wholesome and cute mm. and this i it's find this one really emotional but it's, it's, it's just, like what she went through but it's the oh. placement of it because it's it forgive, forgive me if i'm wrong but is it preceded by the matter pattern correct and then it's followed by oh, probably the link or, but it's or bad to, It's similar to the kind of arc, the emotional arc of Ilanthi, with the logic. Oh yeah, that end. bit's really miserable though. I, I didn't know. enjoy singing her. I think I would enjoy it more now. I think I was too young when I did but it. Ilanthi, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't understand the emotional heft. But like poetry, I agree that it's maybe it is, it's, it's like pretty, but quite oh, quite this simple. is why I was going to bring up that. Sorry, mm. in a pretty pickle, she uses. Mickle, which is a Scottish word, by the way. So where does Dame Hannah get off appropriating our language? Means a lot, by the way, in case you can tell from context. She says crickle, which what is that? And then there's five trickle. rhymes. T.S. began to trickle. Them. There was another one. Sickle, death followed with a sickle. I think it's yeah. a scythe, Gilbert. It's a bit kind of like those. Blah, 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 I think blah, because blah, it's such blah, an blah, unusual blah, 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 like blah. rhyme, it doesn't. It takes me out of the emotion. It's, it stands out, like, when you rhyme you or mm. two or blue, you yeah. don't notice it love or above, you don't notice it heart, fall apart, you don't notice it. So you think when like you, six. When you rhyme yeah. mickle, trickle, crickle, like, I'm just yeah. like, okay, show off, like, it seems like you've got a rhyming dictionary and we're just like... Do you think, do you think she would be a better six? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think Dan that's a a solid six. Um, <laughs> emotional comedic impact. I mean, it's not really terribly funny. I mean, and I emotional. find it really sweet. But the thing is, mm. it's more kind of nostalgic than it is yeah, urgent. I think it's like... Whereas if we think of the Mercado Altos ones, they're so mm. urgent. I think this is this warm. Isn't... Is this like a 10 or 20? 20. I think it's a 10. I think it's comforting. Oh, we don't want you to a bit more than that. I'd have probably gone mm. like 13. 13. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, yeah, it's it thing... is sweet. It is romantic. Yeah, I, 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 I think that... <laughs> But then Sir Rupert Murgatroyd, that that's that's a fifteen. Okay. Oh, I yeah. mean, I I I, I, I probably give it. I probably give it a sixteen. Actually, yeah. knowing that. Have at it. Are you, are you sh no, but points. Do you do you agree? The points are made up. Narrative character importance. Yeah, I mean, oh, ish. No, six. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that we we we've we've got that from her, and. Mm. Enjoyment, yeah, probably a six. Even though I personally love this one, I appreciate yeah. that if the alto is not amazing, if the acting is not amazing, it can be a bit cloudy. It can really sound flat. a bit cloudy and it can be a bit dull. So I would really say, feel... I'd probably say a six because I think it can okay. be done really, really well, <laughs> but I can definitely see how it wouldn't okay. kind of, you know, it wouldn't kind of, you know. And how about cultural longevity? Do you think it has more cultural longevity than... Um, so Rupert Murgatroyd? I don't know. I'm starting to regret adding the six category. <laughs> yeah. Do you think like, like a like a tiny bit? Yeah. Like a, like a two, tiny bit three, I don't know. less? I would thought like a four. Oh, no, four. Because her other one her other one got a six. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe a five? I'm running out of steam. Number, Number eight, eight is 
Come bumpers ever so I ever so many. Come bumpers I ever so many from the Grand, the grand Duke, Duke, the biggest of all of the Dukes. The statutory Duke. He is the biggest. Um, fun fact, when my friend came to watch the Grand Duke dress yeah. so he, um, I said, are you understanding the plot? Expecting a note, because yeah. he wasn't a big Gina S. Mm-hmm. And he went, yeah, and it's really interesting. And I said, what exactly is the Grand Duke? And he proceeded to tell me the ranks of like all the people of the peerage in like oh, cool. order. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. That is knowledge that I do not have. Yeah. Um, so <coughs> you are like the most qualified person in the world to talk about this song. Well, because... I am a massive lush. And you've... Li- and I've I literally just played this role yeah. because you've literally it just played true. it. I have just played this role. I'll be playing this role again at Buxton. Yeah. For one afternoon only. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So With come and see that. Grove no light opera. Yeah. Emma was a, a fantastic baroness. She she delivered the line that ends with um, you know it's so difficult being a lady when one isn't born. To oh. she, she she delivered that in the best. But that her. scene is just like gold. Mm. And it's because Harriet and I didn't know each other very well but like we've got quite a like interesting relationship and like it's quite the a bit in- of chemistry the in- <laughs> well that's because we're both amazing but like the intensity yeah between that just built throughout the week because i think you were saying the last night was like the best delivery of it because there was actual oh yeah it was so spicy yeah um i really love this song it is for me it's on par with or close to on the day when i was wedded seriously yeah I think it's not as exciting. Okay. I'd say it's maybe a couple of points. I behind. mean, musically, <laughs> I'd rate it probably. It's a little bit not simple. quite as high as on the day. No. I've maybe 17, 16. Yeah, I think it's a solid 16, 17. Because I like I'll put 16 the... for now. I'm like, I don't think qu- it's the best song. My quibble the with it is as a as someone who likes to show off. Um, this aria is exactly the same twice, and there's no yeah. alt notes or high note or whatever. So and the story do... of the song doesn't move anywhere. Like the, the, I mean, the, it the gives stakes you are the same, backstory, you know? but the stakes don't escalate. So you yeah. you learn why she's so miserly, which I think is fun. Um, is it funny? Don't... Are the are the lines actually funny? I think I I mean I like to think I delivered them with something. Yeah, um, but it's not about I, your delivery, no, 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 no. it's about the I words think they themselves, can be you know, funny. their jokes. I, 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 I don't know that the jokes land. But, but like, think... being a vehicle for comedy is also marked towards comedic impact, so, yeah. A sandwich and cut orange ball. It's the way, for me, it's like mm. you have to acknowledge that there's a change. So there's the first, which is, let's take advantage of free booze, because who doesn't want to do that? Like, mm. we're going to drink on someone else's dime, let's get sloshed, is a pretty universal sentiment, I think, if you drink. Mm-hmm. Um, let's make the most of it. We've all been to a wedding and seen like the hors d'oeuvres and the and the um flutes of things going around and mm. thinking, oh, I'll go up for an extra one. They won't notice so good at different waiters. No, just me. Okay. Uh- <laughs> it's cute and it's I think it's a really fun like It's a fun performance. It's it's a fun go. divertissement mm-hmm. and like a small break from the complicated story. Yeah. And I think that in its way, narratively, it's like a palate cleanser. Mm-hmm. And I think it's actually super good narratively. I think it's, and it's perfect because it's just before the Herald comes on. And that's yeah. like the it's a good way to get the everyone. Changes. We need everyone everyone on gets on. Yeah. You get a real it's show. The, it's the musical then... equivalent of, hey guys, get in here. Like yeah. An improv scene. Like, it is, need, it need is like a proper, yeah, I'd say like, like narrative importance just in terms of its like, um, Importance yeah. for her as a character you and its placement it. in the show. I I don't want to give it like an eight. I I, I, actually I like really it. Like people it. people yeah. do cut it though. It could be cut. I mean, if you did, why would you? I, I disagree. I think it's really you couldn't <laughs> just have the chorus walk on sing be like who's some of the chariot dum bum bum ba dum ba bum ba bum ba dum ba dum. Why who was this approaching? Or just have the principal yeah, really I think that would be very it. abrupt. Like yeah. that wouldn't be right at all. So I think for that reason, yeah, I give it like an eight, because also because her character is so I think powerful. That's fair. I think that's fair. But then emotional comedic impact. So if we're talking about comedy, because it's not emotional at all. So if we're just talking about comedy, how funny is it? I think there. It depends how funny you find drunk acting. But I yeah. and I had an interesting conversation with Leon Berger about this. Oh, oh no, actually, yeah. it wasn't Leon. Sorry, I'm <laughs> picked up. Drop this name. Um, it wasn't Leon. It was um from Peak. Ian Henderson. Ian Henderson. And he said some really nice things. And he was saying, it's so difficult to play drunk convincingly. Oh, Because everyone yeah, always yeah, does yeah. too much. Mm-hmm. And I think I probably went a little bit overboard in a couple of moments. But, like, we've all been that person where you're like, I'm not drunk. I'm not drunk. Yeah, I'm going to... Mm. And you were trying you not to be so drunk. sober. Yeah, you were yeah. like, I'm, what do you mean? I'm sober. 
I want to I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And there's just I'm 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 telling you mm-hmm. what is I am uh, I I'm I am completely Jeremy sober. sober. And you can take that to the bank. Um yeah, I, I I'm really desperate for 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 you you guys to know I am really good at acting drunk. This is water. You can take that to the fish fingers. <laughs> Speaking of my brilliant acting, how funny is it? Like, I, I think it, it's a... It in the hands of the right actress, it's a 15? Yeah, because it is like... Pro- I'd say, I it's, it's, seen, it's more of a dramatic impact than emotional, this. but I think dramaticism counts yeah, towards emotion in this, this case. I've seen this stood yeah. in song, and it wasn't very effective, but I think... It but I think it's funny. a real rouser. I think yeah. it's maybe not emotional or comedic in the real kind of classic sense, but I think it just, it invokes mm. a feeling of joy. And joy is an emotion. And joy so, is contagious. Yeah. It's That's nice true, to actually. see uh, it's joyful. a it chorus in GNS be happy for like, yeah. a reason that isn't a wedding. It's yes, nice I think that's nice. Get drunk. Lyrics, poetry. Do, do we like the fact that it says enjoy it, enjoy it at all? Or you swallow, you swallow has cost you. So... Like, I what would do you think have about? said no, but I had an interesting conversation with the MD for the Grand Duke we'd just done, oh, yeah. where he was saying, like, those comments are there for a reason. It's not just because Gilbert, you know, couldn't be bothered finding yeah. a sentence uh-huh. that scanned. Um, it's emphasis. Enjoy it. I couldn't Emphasis. enjoy it at all. And I think of that as being, like, in the second, in the back half of the aria, when she is drunker, let's say. I think she's had a bit more strength. They've been enjoying the Pomery. And she goes, like, um, I once had an evening party, a sandwich and cutter and ball, but my guests had some appetites mm-hmm. hearty. I couldn't enjoy it. Enjoy, enjoy it. it. It's like, are you listening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, Get I me. had a terrible experience. And this is why she's so miserly. Mm-hmm. We were talking about this, like, the backstory, the lore of the Baroness. Is that, like, she maybe used to be a very generous and benevolent person, but actually... And people took advantage, people took advantage, of, advantage her. of her for being nice. And so she was like, well, so the only person I can like trust as myself slash uh, Rudolph later but like she protects what's hers and yeah. I think it makes total sense that she's come to get her you know yeah. come, time's come to pay the piper she's going to clear back all this um, but I, I wouldn't give it more than <coughs> I mean no, may, no, no. maybe a seven I'm just making a case for it because I, I enjoy yeah, it as but like maybe a seven yeah. do you think that's fair yeah 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 and how about enjoyment okay oh. so I think this this is I don't know if it's awful that Phileas level. Is it, the question is, is it on the day that I was wedded level? No. Do you think it's an it, eight? They're then? close. Do you think it's an eight? I think for it's enjoyment? an eight. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And cultural longevity. Is it, when you think about the small group of people who, who like love the who Grand Duke? Who love the Grand Duke. Or so like me just, me. like, and like how like is a drinking song how relevant is it how like um do you think people like to be (coughs) entertained in this way like is this i think it's mama i think you either love it or you go oh it's the blimmin alto aria and it's not funny and the lyrics are out of date like i feel like you're either sourpuss about it or you're like oh it's one of my favorite but i think that it is certainly one that oh i love it when the baroness gets drunk (laughs) like i have heard people say so maybe it's like a five like i think it's I it's enjoy not, it. I, th- I, think, I think... What did we say? Five. Yeah, I, I'll say five. Yeah. So, um, that... Are we finished? Number, Number seven, seven is... Oh, Foolish Fay From Iolanthe. <laughs> this is my unlikely earworm. Yes. This song can really get stuck in your head, which is... Interesting, because musically it's not that mm. exciting. Even though it has a nice lilting me- melody, it's not It's not vibrant, it's not mm. surprising musically at the beginning, but I do like the terms. Mm. Mm. Can I tell you something that I don't think you know? Oh. So when we did Ilanthi together, this was back in 2006 or something? 2008. Oh, so that's an A, okay. Whatever. Well, it was my second year. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, so you know. Um, I, rem- I remember, because I auditioned just for any part um, when we auditioned. 
And I remember thinking that even I really wanted to be Phyllis, I honestly thought I was going to end up being the Fairy Queen because up until mm. that point, I'd only ever been the alto lead. I've been Buttercup and I've been Ruth. Which, if you know Rachel and I've heard her sing Mabel or Josephine or anything else, you know is insane. Like, oh, what do you do with your coloratura soprano? Whack her in as the alto lead. That's, that's how we do it. Basically, because I went, I think I went to like the school of MDs who just gave the best person the soprano lead and the second best person the alto lead. I really thought I was going to be the Fairy Queen. And actually the director at the time, she, she could have hinted I was going to be the Fairy Queen. And when you go in with an idea like yeah, that, that's and, and I remember like thinking, oh, that's what I'm going to be. And I kind of got, and it was actually kind of a similar story to what happened with our Grand Duke just now. I didn't think I'd be the Baroness. When I the audition, I was like, oh, well, actually, what would happen if I was the Baroness? And this happened, you know, what? And, how how was the thing and then I just started thinking, oh, the Baroness is a really good part. I could have wished I'd taken that more seriously. And, that, you know, I'll have all my life for the Baroness, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, and that's the part for Immigrant, isn't it? Yeah, but isn't it funny? It's not the part I wanted. Who got the part I wanted, Rachel? A new soprano, because what does every amateur group get? A new soprano for who, every show. Who was love, phenomenal, by the way. like... Uh, we we are obsessed. Like she has maybe come in conversation like five times today, like completely independently. Yeah. We really like you, Harriet. We we think that you're really fun, and we like you to come and play. Come and play, yay! I always, from the very start, found this aria, and like this was like back in my kind of vaguely emo phase. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. This aria is like the most profound, most beautiful, most incredible song I've ever heard in my life. This heart of mine is soft as thine, although I dare not say so. I would How venture, heavy is that? I would venture Ooh. to say this is the sexiest alto aria. Can you, can you sing the O Captain Shaw one? Yes. Right, in, right into the lens of the camera, so oh, like there. Okay. Oh, Captain Shaw. Type of true love kept under. Could thy brigade with cold cascade quench my great love? I wonder. That How line is that. How sexy is that line? She says, "Could your entire fire brigade hose out all oh, my exactly. sexy love?" Probably not. And the, and the question is, Anna, this, this is my question for you, because like, I think a lot mm. of people, a lot of normies, think that like GNS is like ridiculous. Mm. And like, oh, these characters are ridiculous. They're all like... But this is no pre- more but, ridiculous like, than like... But how many times in your life have you had that very same feeling about somebody? <laughs> well, just yesterday. Uh, no, but genuinely, I would say like a good five or six times. Genuinely, and like that is a real thing that she's talking about. That's oh, not yeah. so. If you are unlucky enough to never have to like mm. not know what she's talking about, then oh. we, we are telling you this is a very real thing, and yeah. that is out there for you, mm. for you, not you. No, yes, you. I'm only kidding. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> we have fun. If you've never felt that rush of like utter love, lust. Yeah. Oh, woof, that teenage lusty crush or like yeah. ill-advised office romance then you need to go out and, and find someone Rachel you're now a disembodied uh, head or, or rather a, a <laughs> loose torso the fairy queen and her entire speech before that is basically just saying do you think I am made of stone of course I'm melting looking at this man look at this man isn't he a sex pot and then yes. sings an entire like two verse song basically saying he's like Ovid who wrote oh it's poetical like um, is that right I can't really I do can't Latin I didn't do classics at uni that should be illegal to go to St Andrews and not do yeah. classics everyone did classics, classics didn't they? Everyone yeah. did it. ha I said it snuck it in that's an Easter egg for like two people. And then Captain Shaw, who was the, the head of the Metropolitan Fire Brigade in whatever year, and uh, apparently a huge uh, sex pot, according to, to the Fairy Queen. A huge sex pot. I didn't actually, I should have looked at his. Because um, I, lo- I love how kind of like straight private witnesses as well. Yeah, like, yeah. Yes, yes. I, yes. I, I'm, I'm generally admired. Yeah. It's I like, am I can quite understand. Admired. If you haven't yet seen Kate Lowe <coughs> in a in a production as the Fairy Queen, like, like you, you, you're, you're missing out. You are missing out on a huge chunk of enjoyment being in your life. 
Okay, right I now, need more enjoyment chunks watch, in my watch, life. Watch um, the Four Bear Theatre production of Iolanthe on GS Opera TV and watch Kate Lowe. Like Kate Lowe was now she mm. usually at the moment she plays um, uh, kind of like some of those like smaller mezzo roles in um, the National Genius Opera Company. Like I think she was Angela, um, but she but she is one of my absolute favourite GNS performers in the world, and she is a master at these alto roles. Mm. If you ever have a chance to cast Kate Lowe as your alto <laughs> lead, just do it. When I tell you that she like just a hundred percent understood all this stuff, you know, talking about, without even really talking about it like that much. But then she was also like adorably embarrassed about it, like like little oh, I wonder. No, she was like she did like a little oh okay. But yeah, that was but that is how to do that. Like because the what I love about the Fairy Queen is that she is actually really vulnerable. And, and it's funny because you know they're they're oh it's sin to marry a mortal. Mm. Like, but you have very mortal emotions. Like, like these exactly. these fairies are behaving like like mortal women. Precisely. Um, yeah, also, yeah. can we just take in isolation the line "Turn the hose of common sense"? Turn the hose of common sense. I just and make it just tickles me as a phrase. It tickles me as a phrase. Yeah. What's so foolish, Faye, musically? I, I mean, I love how it amps up the tension. Is it? Is that as good as Silver Does the Rain? No, part? it's not yeah. enough variety. It's the I same think. thing twice and, and with no real increase in emotional intensity. I agree, I agree. Um, yeah. But it's, a, look, but it's a nice enough melody. Oh, yes. It, does, it does get in my head. I don't know, I'm thinking What did maybe... we give Silver? We gave that a 16. 16. I mean, I'd, I'd say either a 14 or a 15. Your okay. choice. Okay, uh... Let's go think? 15 because I think melodically it is pleasing. Let's give it a, let's go for a 15. It, it is a very, and I get a lot of pleasure out of singing it. And that's oh, yeah. for something. Lyrics. Lyrics. Poetry. Oh, I love the poetry in this one. Mm. Well, like, Ovidius Naso is just such a, it's like cellar door. It's so interesting to wrap yes. your head around. Type of Ovidius Naso. Like, that can be really beautiful and operatic. I would, I would say... Okay, here's my one problem with the poetry. Mm. And it's a tiny thing. Is it but the awkward rhyme? Maybe it's not so tiny. It's, it's, no, it's not the awkward rhyme. It's more, it's the fact that I think that the second verse lyrics are so clever mm. that I do think a lot of audience members and indeed directors think that she's in love with Captain Shaw. But that isn't what she's saying. Because yeah. often they have her reaching out to Captain Shaw going, yeah. Captain Shaw... And it's just, no, no, she isn't she, in love yeah. with Captain Sh yeah. She is she, talking about Willis his fibre yeah. grade putting out the flames yeah. of her love. But I think that sentence is so long. I think it, that the meaning of that can be verging on inaccessible because it's just such a long sentence. So I do, I do think it's not perfect. Oh, there is another. And I probably only, I, I think the max I could give it would be an eight, to be honest. I think that's fair because I don't think it's perfect. It's definitely not as good as Silver Does the Rainbow Hair. No, so it's would... maybe a seven or an eight. Let's give it a seven. Let's say that's like Gilbert's really kind of like standard good. Yeah, like yeah. What we'd nice. expect. Nice. What we'd expect from Gilbert. <laughs> How about like emotional comedic impact? I think the right fairy queen could really make this very funny and a yeah. little bit emotional. It depends if you're going to play, are you going to play her lust for comedy or are you going to make it like a genuine, you know, are you going to play into the emotional mm -mm -mm. truth of it and say she's actually experiencing what it's like to fall in love, what she thinks. This is so funny because it's, so, because it's just so intense. But I think but it's this also isn't... super emotional. Yeah. I think this is, it's I a high think scorer. we maybe... I mean, I wonder if we, because I would say this probably deserves 18. an 18, but then that makes me think that maybe Silver should only be 17, or it may be even a 16. Ooh. May, maybe did we mark oh, that a bit too I highly? I don't know that I agree with you. I I, Do you, I, yeah. Maybe it's the because message, that, isn't it? I like, yeah. I, it's not even the message that I like, I just enjoy Do Do, do you think they're equal singing. emotionally? Well, I would say if played with truth, Sad mm. as that woman's lot is is more truthful and more emotionally impactful. That's true. But comedically, yeah. foolish babe could come up short. I think they're very close. Do you think they're equal? But, if, but if, it make you, if it make you happy, no, 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 no. But I, actually, I think you, you have kind of convinced makes me. You happy. No, I, no, I think you have kind of convinced me that actually, sad is they're on par with each other. Should we say they're both 18s right. for now? Let's, Let's go do wild. That. They're going to come up very close to each other. And I think that's true for a lot of people. I think people tend to put like Patience and Iolanthe in the same like category. 
when it comes to like standard of music, standard of characters, they're very similar kinds of shows, I think. I do think that even though, as I was saying in my Island like Dialogue video, that actually the importance of the fairies not being able to marry mortals is really high, but that also um, it's not really kind of like clear to me why it is that the fairies fall in love with the peers. And I wish it had been like an established thing that mm. although it's illegal for fairies to marry mortals, or like maybe this is why do. it's illegal, it's because mortals are absolutely irresistible and they're mm. so irresistible that it kind of drains them of their magic or are like, <gasps> Ooh, I like that. That's what it is. That, you like, lose that's, your power that's what it needs to be. That fairies will lose their power because the power, like <laughs> these men, these male mortals, or no, not just male mortals, like, anyone could be a fairy, mm. the, that these, the, these mortals are so sexy that we just cannot stay away from them. And maybe I mean, I'm that sorry, is what actually happened. You maybe can't that enter is to loudly let the trumpets bray, bray in like a, you know, cape and diamonds, whatever you're wearing. I don't know, the peers have little crowns sometimes. Yeah. Can't enter that way to, like, and not instantly. expect people to fall in love with them. Like, that's an entrance. The fairies have to, like, instantly fall in love with them. That was so good, wouldn't it? The narrative surrounding the fairies and why they fall in love with the peers is a bit weird. And so it's not immediately clear why it's part of the story, but mm. the, the fairies doing that is what makes it possible for, like, for Iolanthe and Lord Chancellor to be together. So, like, that, that, that is, like, an important so thing. So it's pretty important. Yeah. So let, but, but I don't think it's, like, essential to the plot to, like, have this exact song um, in it. So, I mean, I'll, I'll give it a seven, probably. Seven, I'll, I'll give it a seven. seven. Let's do it. And it's nice for her character as well. So I think seven is about right. Enjoyable. I find this very enjoyable. Oh, I love this. I think at least a seven for Yeah. Me. I, it's very lyrical. It's very nice to listen yeah. to. And is this one loved and, like, under... And, I feel like it might be among those who know it, you know? Yeah, like, and I don't know like, if it really has... Because I think Iolanthe is quite well-liked. Oh, absolutely. As an opera on the whole. I mean, I think that, that's probably like a decent... Um, maybe a six? Mm-hmm. Let's do it. I don't think it's quite as iconic as the Lady Jane no, song. I don't think that's no. it's quite as cultural or iconic a thing. Number, Number six, six is... Mm. So Rupert Murgatroyd, which is the part that my boyfriend is playing Ooh. in um in the Savoy Net Protocol. He's playing Sir Rupert Murgatroyd, That's which means exciting. he gets to say fallacy somewhere, I fancy. But isn't that cool how he's quite a small part, but there's a whole song that like but there's it is called Sir About Rupert Murgatroyd. Him. I love that. Out of the so. exposition heavy arias, the narrative narrative heavy ones, this is the one that I most enjoy. Far and away my favourite like, expositional like because it actually plot explaining song. Is it is a so fun good. song, it's got the hushed chorus that gives me the goosebumps. <sighs> And, it, and again, especially if it's done, and there's something really, really, I think this, uh, you were saying Joanna talked about like tone paintings and scene mm. paintings. For me, this song sets the tone for Rodrigo, not Fair as Rose. You get the... And it's kind of almost sounds hopeful. And then the, the real droning yes. cello. Oh. It's like musically. Oh, what yeah. oh. It for me. I played this Dame is, Hannah, you know. I have not. I played Rose Mabel. I played Dame Hannah for Four Bear Theatre's production of Roger Gore. Just um because usually it was Isabel Page, but mm. she couldn't do one show, so mm. I had to play her for that show. And it was Amazing. I absolutely love it. Dame Hannah is such a great she, part. For she's a great also, part. She's a really fun part. And I love singing this. Like the tension mm -hmm. that it evokes. Oh, it's absolutely glorious. This is the first, because Fair as Rose is so... I just think this absolutely sets the tone for Rudigore. It says, mm, yeah. all is not as it seems in mm. the little village of Red Erring. It is, you know, there's a darkness here. There's a curse. There's yeah. stakes. And there is there were stakes. He ha he dies. That's the ultimate stake. You know, not talking yeah. about ultimate burgers, but like I mean, that's the we, ultimate stake. I mean, can we just know. load the computer up and oh, just sorry. agree right then and there yeah. that this gets a ten out of ten for narrative slash character importance? Hundo. Please. Because this is like one of the best expositional songs in yeah. the canon. But it it's, also because it's also you, so yeah. emotional and there's such high stakes in it. So <laughs> right from the very start of the yeah. show, you are hooked. I love this. Mm. This is such Rodrigo starts so well. Oh, like honestly, the songs, so yeah, it's like ooh, 
So mm -hmm. exciting. I love Project Gorgon. Yeah, no, I think this is brilliant. And musically, although it is one that mm -hmm. I was saying about the um, parallelism, this is another one. It's got like three sort of oh, identical yeah, yeah, yeah. and slightly changing Explains. verses. It's not a god, despite his, his best, best endeavour. It sounds like a declaration. It's so different to the tone of the rest of it. And, and, and also and the in <laughs> The bit that I don't oh. like, the only quibble oh, I have yes. musically with this song is at the end when it ends. Um, and thus, with what is that? Sin employed, employed, thus died each perpetrated. And it peters out with the chorus going. I quite, I like it. Kind of peters out. Do you not like it? it? Like it. it's just different I mean, no but it should it's a dip because it peters away it's but it should end with a bump does it end with a bump it might i think it does but, it, but i think in terms of it doesn't have an outro no but musically i like it i think it's interesting Do, would you would you say is it on par with foolish bay uh i would say it's better yes, it I, should it? we give it a 17 for now I and then see how that kind fine. of works out it's just yeah it's musically except uh musically exciting Lyrics and poetry. Um, I don't I, know if it's poetic is the right word. Yeah, I mean, I'd go, I'd give it a solid. Um, ooh, he feel him in great, they dug him in his leg. Um, I, I do. I, I would say it deserves at least an eight. Okay. What do you think? Um, yeah, I'm in agreement. I think I might once we do some other ones reevaluate, but for now I'm happy with that. Um, emotional comedic impact. If played with truth, and I know I keep saying that, so sorry, but like if mm. played with emotional oh, truth, but you have to play it with emotional. But like truth. if played with emotional truth, you know we they should be Ooh. the audience should be right there with the bridesmaids. Yeah, yeah. they should be like on her every word. Like oh my god, like if someone doesn't commit oh, these yeah. crimes, they're gonna lose their life. Yeah, and do that's, that's that's crazy. It's pretty emotional. I'm gonna say what fifteen? I would say I yeah I would say fifteen because I because I don't think it completely bridges the gap with the others no. because it's not really. It is personally involving her because she almost married him, but, but the actual content of the song is about, Rupert is about the what is about the curse and the history, yeah. etc. So yeah, I, I think that maybe it, it gets a fifteen. I think that's that's a good, cool. fair mark for it. Narrative, character, importance. We already did ten. Enjoyment. I do enjoy this song. Oh, I love this one. Um, At least an eight for me. Yeah, yeah. Don't know what I you think, think about I that. think so. Yeah, I think only beaten by sad as that woman's lot yeah. for me so far when we think of its cultural impact i don't think this is one that people like, like think about too much but that's just because like rudigore is actually even though it's really popular amongst like the kind of diehard fans of rudigore like a people a outside people like of the community it, yeah. don't whoops we, we're not going to want this bit of chicken, corn, chicken that nugget. went in <laughs> cat food mm. i don't know if it's cultural impact is strong because but that's just because rudigore overall Mm. It's one that people don't really kind of like Which do outside the community so much. It. But no, we, we are we are all obsessed with Rodigal. I mean, come on, we we all absolutely love Rodigal. I That's mean, I would say like I'll Rodigal, play any part. I'll play Old Adam. I will play yeah. Zora. It's a nice middling one when it comes to popularity. Like mm. it's niche enough that people feel like, oh, we're doing one of we're the rarely done different. ones, but it's I it on par commonly with, like, done enough that like, people know it. I reckon. It yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. To me, yeah. it's not, I would say, yeah, actually, that's a really interesting thing, because I feel like I've got an implicit understanding of the kind of known categories that these fit into. Because mm. I say you get, like, um, the the three big ones are Mikado, yeah. Pirates, and Pinnacle. Pinnacle. And then it's like a second category that has gondoliers and Ireland in yeah, it. Yeah. And then I think there is a third category like that has Patience, Patience Yeoman, Yeoman, Rudigor. Um, I don't know where the Sorcerer goes. Try, uh, sorcerer, like, sorcerer, sorcerer in Trial. Sorcerer, I think, is actually... Maybe that goes with gondoliers. gondoliers. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. people do perform it a lot, I think. Yeah, okay. So, so, so maybe Sorcerer, Sorcerer and Trial are up with Gondoliers and Iolanthe. But then it's like Rudigore, Yeoman of the Guard, Princess Ida, and yeah. Patience. Maybe Patience is a, maybe between, mm. I don't know. Patience and, but then you've got Grand Duke and Tokyo in the category of their own. 
um, which are the ones that really aren't done too much uh, until the last couple of years when there's been a, actually quite a lot of Grand mm. Dukes, so it's, which is great. We've got a Grand yeah. Duke, but I'd say that, that, that we do another one. But this, um, but this Rudigal, uh, this Rudigal number, I say it can't really get more than a six just because it's in Rudigal. You know yeah, what I mean? I think that's fair. Number, number five, five is. is... Sad is that woman's lot, oh. slash, silvered oh. is the raven hair. Okay, not, not to give the game away. Yeah. But um, I think, think we've entered a different category now. And that is often what I say about the, that kind of transition between pirates and patients. It does feel like <coughs> Gilbert and Sullivan, not as just kind of like their own topsy-turvy thing, mm -hmm. but as artists, they both sort of whoosh, yeah, even before we decided on these categories today, I was thinking, okay, for me, Lady Jane's area has it all in terms of there is emotion there, mm. there is huge potential for comedy. I love the instrumentation of the like plodding cello line that almost like sounds like middle age bom, to me. Bom, 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 bom. Bom. It's very heavy. If you listen it's to the way it's yeah. bowed, it's very like musically, it's very ploddy. And then she gets the beautiful. Which is so simple and so and beautiful. Then, like, and then the best. Oh, oh no, I was going to go for one of my favourite lines in GNS. Still more corpulent, grow I. Oh, yeah. Just like a frame you've got the right to with the line. Too much of me in the coming by. And tell me what you were saying earlier about being too much. So often women who are extroverted or expressive or emotional um, or, get interesting. Told, or interesting, just not, you know, or neurodivergent, no let's be honest, um, might get told they're too much in social situations. But I think How many those... times have you been told <sighs> you are too much? Countless. Um, Interestingly, I haven't actually been told that seriously oh, by wow. anybody in about five years, That's because good. I think that now I, I, I mean maybe it's the not drinking thing, but also that I, I think that I, I am a little bit more respected now than I was hmm. maybe five years ago. Like, but certainly I, I used, I used to get told by people who I thought were very close to me. Just things like, um, uh, Rachel, the reason that people don't like you very much is because you're you're just a bit too much. Have, have you had that happen to you? Have you had people say that to you as yeah, well? Yeah, or just, I think, other people being embarrassed about my behaviour when they don't really have any right to be. Mm -hmm. I, I remember there was an instance where one of my exes, who I'm in good terms with now, um, but we had a fight because I was being too competitive playing a board game and he said, you embarrassed me, you were so rude to your mother and I was no. like, my mum doesn't think I was being rude yeah. to her. Your yeah, when they try and you put don't know, their emotions yeah. onto other people. I've, I've had you know, I have a yeah. different relationship with my parents to mm. that person's relationship. Um, they probably don't remember that. I have internalised it and remember it always. Mm. That's the thing. And, and the thing is, but what is interesting about... I am a person who often used to get told she was too much, but I am also an incredibly sensitive person. So if people mm -hmm. say that kind of thing to me, I do internalise it. And the thing is, I, this had never occurred to me before because I know, obviously, it was intended to be about her being fat and about her growing in size, but that had like, a parallel like had just occurred to me about there will be too much of me. And it's almost like J Jane doesn't really want to occupy more space in the world. Or she doesn't because... feel like she's entitled to it. Yeah. Because, and this yeah. is something I want to bring up, the entire purpose of this song, it's so relevant, it is women's value is inherently linked to their youth, vitality, mm. visible beauty, uh, you know, vibrancy, mm. all that. 
older women outside Helen Mirren and Judi Dench. Yeah. Older women don't exist. Well, they only exist if they're glamorous. And then people go, oh, I can't believe she's X, Y, Z. Or, or, or yeah, they, they, they exist purely for like, wow, I can't believe how young, how, how yeah. old they are. They, they, they look so yeah. young. And that's always such a compliment. Yeah, and, like, that, and that's, you why? know, because you couldn't possibly be a hot 85-year-old. That just doesn't, that isn't possible. Mm -mm. We're approaching 40. Yeah, I am almost 37. And would you say that Rachel Middle looks like a 40-year-old woman? I, oh. I, I wouldn't. Because I've got no makeup on. But you look like a youthful bunny. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I've got a few wrinkles. But the thing is, people come to me and they say, oh, wow, you look so young. But I'm like, mm. most people my age look this like this. If you don't occupy, if you don't bring anything to the world in terms of the wealth of your yeah. beauty, you are not worth taking up space in the world. Cipolla. Yeah, I, I, abs I absolutely agree. Like, I think that, uh, and it is... It's so interesting how that Lady Jane has, up until this point, been so kind of like bolshy and oh, fun. Oh, so and like inserting, And she's so fabulous. And I love Lady Jane. No, I mean, certainly she's like I three, am. I why shouldn't I? You know? I certainly she, I am. Why shouldn't she I? She had no, no qualms about barging up and being first in the queue for a raffle. You know, she, she was not afraid of anything. And then it's like she's had the power taken away from her. Yeah. Like, she was confident and body positive and feminist and had that I don't G, you know. But the thing is, what, what I would argue, and like, obviously, this is completely open to interpretation, like, mm. by individuals, but I imagine that she, <coughs> she, as like many strong people, she always has those insecurities. Oh, of course, and, and but she just thoughts. puts up a yeah, front. yeah. I have moments of like extreme weakness, <clears throat> but then also moments of extreme strength. And I think that's, that's, real so when gilbert's just, writing these characters yeah. she feels real to me and i love that she feels her. like a real song. woman yeah. and this is what um i was wanting to bring up which is about the parallelism oh, um, a sort yeah, of literary yeah. parallelism where in a lot of these areas you get um one verse and then it's counter verse so you're getting the yin and the yang you're getting half an onion um as do we all at some point in our lives. <laughs> the first is, little will be left of me. Mm. And then conversely, mm. there will be too much of me. Yes! And both, oh, and both options are equally Nothing awful. she can do. She's, you know, yeah. rock in a hard place. There's Absolutely. No way through and that is really beautiful. And that is also something I've never mm -hmm. really truly stopped to consider. I was digging into it today, the literary balance oh. of how here's one possibility and here's the other. Mm. And there isn't a right choice. I can't do anything. You yeah. physically can't stop the aging process. I'm older than I was yesterday. I've just had a birthday a couple of days ago. You know, time marches on. She can't do anything about it. Basically, the poetry and the music are both really good, aren't they? I think it's one of the most musical ones because it's interesting. It has a dramatic oh, the recit. um, recitative, which is... <laughs> like, real. <laughs> The, yeah, the string part first of all, the cello part, and then actually the drama of it, and then you get this yeah, beautifully bowed kind of aria. It has depth for me. Um, I think, yeah, I think musically it is one of the more interesting. This is out of 20, right? I would say yeah. maybe... Because I, I love the like mimicked bowing. It's not easy to do. Mm. It's really it's like skipping strings on a violin. It's really hard to play. Yeah. Um, I would say seventeen for me. Eighteen. Oh really? For music. Yeah. Okay. It's high up. I mean, I was me. thinking more like fifteen, sixteen territory. Okay. Can so we should, should we should we should we settle on the sixteen fair? for music? Split the difference. Um, and a, the poetry. I am I am oh. so into everything you've just said, and yeah. I think we can include that par parallelism because that also counts towards poetry, doesn't it? That yeah, of, the, yeah, the let's say the musical composition and then the structure in terms of mm. the two different sides of it. Um, yeah, it's high again for me. I think probably out of all. I mean, it's up there for me. Eighteen for poetry. I mean, it's only out of ten, but like oh, a nine. <laughs> but a nine. Well, that, that translates to a nine. I, I think I think a nine. And then we move on to emotional slash comedic impact. What are you thinking for that? I mean, for me, for one minute, it's pretty, it's pretty yeah. resonant. You know, yeah. we're at our, our, uh, our importance is only declining. Our cultural value is only declining mm. minute by minute, day by day. Yeah. Um, and it's funny. 
And yeah, it is funny. Yeah, it's high for me. It's high for me. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm kind of thinking maybe even like an 18. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. I still think Gadoosh. there are some that we haven't talked about yet, which yeah. are like a little bit more emotional. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, but the thing is, this one, if this was just emotional, it'd be more like 16. But the fact that it's also funny mm -hmm. brings it up the, to the, 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 Some of the word choice in it, like corpulent is just so corpulent. funny to me. Yeah, 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 spreading yeah. is the, is the shape, shapely waist, tapered waist? Spreading is the tapered Ooh, waist. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. tapered. Um, there's like, really descriptive like it's almost like you can see it happening yes you know i, I imagine her almost like in slow real time yeah um yeah it's high for me it's uh, high uh, um and then we move on to like uh wait what do we say oh, for yeah, that? Narrative, narrative character importance um, nar narrative character importance um tells us a lot about her her inner work it does um and she and even in her little speech before she kind of well, that we can't count the speech towards the song. Did you get a seven? Yeah, I think that's okay, fair. Seven. I think that's fair enough. Enjoyment. I mean, hey, who doesn't oh. love this song? Especially when people put a directorial spin on it. Yeah. With the playing of the instrument. If it's if it's if the person is playing an instrument, it's like an automatic nine. Yeah, right? yeah. I was gonna say if they've actually got a cello or they're playing a seven. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think a nine. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's I a think... nine. And then like cultural impact. I think that like. Amongst the GNS community, mm. this is a really well known a well, song, isn't and it? And a well loved aria. Yeah. Like, I think there's not many people who'd say, oh, this is awful, you know. Yeah, I'd say, pro I mean, to me, it's kind of like eight ish. What do you think? Yeah, I think, and in thinking about the cultural, as in, like, how relevant is it today? It's oh, eternally you. Relevant. Yeah, that That's as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably a seven. Yeah? Yeah. Well, we gave that to the other one, though, so maybe an eight. Maybe an eight. Okay. I think it's probably an eight. Don't do the Mikado ones for now. Okay. Go straight to Rodrigo. The only reason is because oh, while we're eating, I want to show you something. And I'm going to tell everyone what, what it is. Put your hands oh. in your ears. I'm going to play her the 1966 film of the Mikado, which I'm obsessed with. And she's going to loot them. Number four is Oh Fool That Fleest. So that's the one that we're talking about next. So... Emma Retty, who has played the alto part in the Mikado, you've played her like three times three now? Three times, I think, yeah. Wow. I'll do it again! <laughs> is, it, is that like, without a doubt, your favourite part you've ever played? Yeah, I think so. I mean, like, I've enjoyed parts I've done in other projects, yeah. but out of Gilbert and Sullivan characters, I think she is... Oh, she like she gets not a, a a face heel turn, but a heel face turn almost. So she starts out as the baddie, and then it gets discovered that she's actually a vulnerable woman. Lady Jane plus, and it? she gets fun comedic bits as well. Oh my god! Like the, the, the beauty in the bellow is hilarious. Her dialogue is phenomenal. No, I just... have a left arm that people come miles yeah. to see. You know, like just, oh, so good. just everything, every word out of her mouth. But like specifically, <laughs> let's start thinking about oh fool that fleas. So like what like. And in fact, yeah, yeah. Let's let's just talk about this song for now. So tell me how um, like how it feels to come out and up and do that. Her appearance in the uh, at one finale mm. is one of my great reveal moments. One of the great entrances in GNS. Yeah. And this is the first thing you sing after the recit. Mm -hmm. So you know you get your revel cease. Assist me, all of you. Is this an automatic ten for enjoyment? Oh, for me, like. 100%. It's the tension in yeah. the strings. It's But this isn't like... If if we were to say these three I moments, would enjoy so... singing and watching this. Put it that yeah, way. yeah, yeah. Um, okay, that's fair. Just because, like, when... Do, do you think that the others would get a nine? Or do you think they're probably going to be tens as well? Which ones? Her other ones? Her other ones, yeah, yeah. Um, I... So I think we might have different... Well, it's but but like but you're definitely happy with this being a ten. Oh yeah, yeah yeah, At least awesome. for now. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, let's have it a ten for now. And mm -hmm. and um, Hi. oh fool that fleas! Tell me what you were saying when we were watching it about the parallelism. Oh yeah, pa parallelism, which is a word that's harder and harder to say. Um, it's another song of two halves. You ran away. Yeah, like, and 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 she got to point out all his flaws because obviously she's so ugly and terrible in this traditional version mm. that he ran away, and then she's like, "Actually, mate, you're not much better." And also, your new girl is very naive. Um, so you know, so you get that 
you can play them differently as well. With a tenor, you can be more seductive. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The fool that flees my own. Yeah. And then with uh, the uh, soprano, yeah. it can be more about like intimidating. Like yeah, it, it can be, yeah, it can absolutely. be subtler and quieter. Mm. Um, and it's and it just shows so much to the character, so much to the alter. She has so much dignity, oh. but what she is angry at betrays that she is vulnerable. Yeah. So even though it's a very kind of angry kind of confident song there is a ton of vulnerability there in this one as well because the fact that she's so <laughs> triggered by these two being happy yeah like she is fuming at this point like absolutely fuming and it's one of the few like justifiable angry moments in gs yeah, and she i doesn't am pull all any over punches. that and it's yeah. not even like over the top anger like there are over the top moments but this is a quieter moment i thought it was interesting what you were mm. saying about um uh, betraying her vulnerability it's interesting that this is the public bit you know threatening mm. threatening the tenor threatening the salt but then her two private ones which we'll come on to discuss yeah. are so interior and those are to me those are asides to the audience they're like a you know yeah um, absolutely what's it called not soliloquy a soliloquy yeah like a, a like monologue, like a, yeah, yeah, monologue yeah, yeah. To, the, to the audience you know the arrow cut, like she's saying that to herself she's saying it to the audience the others are oblivious mm. whereas in this one or it's just like a moment captured like yeah. i would if there was some way I'd she say, compartmentalizes it if if, if, if if there was exactly if there was some way that you could get it where but it was like where, where like head, it was in her head i wonder can you imagine what it would be like if all the chorus just froze in time mm. like mid laugh yeah. just to show that it was happening in yeah. one moment and then she gets back to or like she weaves through them and then walks back to her yeah. position and then she finishes in exactly the position she started and then it just continues mm. like, or to, just to show that that's just like one snapshot and everything yeah. stops and it's not that, be it's, cool. yeah it's like she compartmentalizes it yeah. you know she goes she goes I feel terrible. Okay, squash down. Back to business. I'll tear the mask from you. You know, next plan, plan mm. B. I'm, I'm still getting what I want. I'm still going to marry the tenor. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, I think th uh, this one I like because it has intensity. I think lyrically, yeah. there's just something really sad. It's really oh the poetry. I, I, yeah. I think poetry might be a ten. Mm. What do you think? I, this it, one? It's really, it's the choice of words. Pink cheek. That ruins where wisdom serves. Right, right, right eye, eye. rose lip, smooth tongue. tongue. A smooth, oh, like, like doom so, is nigh, thy knell is rung. It's so. I, this is a ten for me. Yeah, this is a ten. And it's I a ten for you. Didn't yes, and yeah. I understand the emotion behind it. Like as much like the page to say, I have been this girl. I've been yeah. this person who goes. Haven't we all? If we think about music for this number, I really love the accompaniment. Me too. And it depends how. Far we're taking it. Are we taking it into just before away the prosecutor? Yes, yes. Because yeah, if we include all that with the chorus oh, God, stuff, stuff, I think yeah, it's yeah. phenomenal. I love it. Yeah, it's it's high. I'd say above a fifty. It's high. I'd say it. I'd say 16? it's on a par with Sir Rupert Murgatroyd, maybe. Which is what 16, 17. 17. Yeah, I like that. I I like that. Just, I'm happy with it being. They're 17, both. They'd honestly. both be fun to sing, and they're both fun mm. to watch. So emotional comedic impact. Oh. I mean, I don't know if it's comedic, but it's I'd so give it a powerful. Th let's think. We gave we gave Sir Rupert Murgatroyd a fifteen, a sixteen. Yeah, yeah, I think so because the emotion at the end because it's actually about her and mm. and her relationship yeah. to the tenor and the narrative character importance. The actual meat of the song itself isn't hugely narratively important, no. and it's and for the character, I guess it is, <laughs> but it's. But you it's, it's very one note. Passing. It's very one note. So yeah. I would I wouldn't say this deserves more than a six for narrative character and I think that's fair. I think yeah, it's yeah, fair. yeah, yeah. Um, but enjoyment, that's a ten. Oh my god, it's and so fun. Cultural longevity. I mean it's, the message it's is up there, isn't it? Yeah. And this is a really well known one. Yeah, it's one of the big three and Yeah, i it probably a nine. Yeah, I think that's I fair. Think this is I fair. think it's fair. But yeah. Just in general, her entrance. I don't think people kind of know it as the song necessarily, but just just, just the alto's entrance yeah. in Mikado is Your like a thing. Cease is a massive, me all and that is counted in it. It's and it's it's yeah. like the same as with um, with Fury and Describable mm. I Burn. Like it's another moment where they come steamrolling in. Yeah, you know, the Duchess has a very different entry, slowly on a gondola. But like you know, this is this is coming in just saying, yeah. "Excuse me, mm -mm. why is no one helping me?" Like, yeah don't you know who mm. i am it's oh I yeah love it. i just love it she is both 
like so likable and so odious Ugh. and so fabulous but the best of us oh, are amazing. that's how i see myself like that I'm, is so true i'm sure i annoy some people to hell and some other people think i'm incredibly like enigmatic and some people are a bit scared of me and also i'm vulnerable inside like isn't yeah. that just what people are yeah it's very yeah. neurodivergent isn't yeah. it number, number three, three is alone and yet alive from the Mikado. So, um, we've already kind of tapped on some of these, yeah. but I, I would say that if we just, to me, like narratively, this one is really, really good. Maybe mm. not quite as good as what I thought the fleas, but but um, it's Flowers of Bloom in a Spring. Yeah. Because um, I feel like we have, you know, there's been a couple of scenes that have gone by we haven't seen the Alto mm. in a little while. We are, it's kind of like a little callback to Hour of Gladness. Mm -hmm. And I think, and she is coming on again. So I, I mean, I think that narratively it's maybe not so strong as the other two because this is just yeah. like a reminder. She, does, she doesn't have a reason to come on stage. Her, the reason to come on stage is to sing the song. It's not like. Yeah. yeah. So I think that. In that sense, it is ever so slightly jarring, and that oh, we've we we're not actually learning anything new about her character. Mm. But, but it's, it's but still it's getting her back to that vulnerable place. So yeah. that when so um, I'd say I'd give it a seven. Yeah, for for narrative sure. character importance, but I think for everything else, I think this is going to be top marks yeah. or close to. Um, I mean, first of all, yeah, let's talk about the music because I, I didn't think this was maybe quite as good as our gladness my, but it is like it's not my favorite rest it yeah that underlay is wonderful hearts do not play because you know it's similar to um it's it's another kind of um yeah well some sort of quavers i don't know which quavers would you give this a 20 do you think for musicality no i don't think so interesting i do you think it's equal with our of gladness do you think they both deserve 19s i honestly couldn't say i think it's w which one is more to you because i'm i'm not totally sure either way yeah i mean i i just think alone and alive is almost too short to be and it's the fact that, uh, that there's something anticlimactic about the o living eye yeah. section to me it's such a weird but Never. I love the. I actually love the recipe. It's not my favorite in terms of dun, drama, dun, dun, but it is. Dun. But musically, it's fun. To my say. Do you know what, what it reminds me of? And it might be because of the key it's in. But it reminds me a bit of. Verta, Verta. Um, it's What's um. So va lesser couleur milame. It's a Ooh. or horrible French. Um, from Verta. Um, oh. It's one of the auto, it starts with, um, sorry, neighbours. It just starts with yeah. a scream. Oh, nice. And it's like, this gives me that vibe. It's in, the, it's in that, it's in that yeah. very, uh, it's a, it's like minor, yeah, pleading key, which is interesting. Oh. Yeah, I, 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 oh, it's... Yeah, it is in a minor key, isn't it? Thank but you. it's, but it's, um, I, I absolutely love it. But I, I wouldn't really rate it higher than O for the O for the Yeah, okay, 18? okay. I'll do an eighteen. I'll do, let's do an eighteen for that. Um, poetry of the lyrics. A li Interesting enough, like I do think the poetry is really good, but I don't think it works. It wasn't. The words are beautiful mm. and. It's nice to say them, but I don't know if, as poetry, they're particularly good. Maybe, Again, maybe just we're, like we're a seven. We're straying into teenage girls' journal. Yeah. You know, alone and yet alive. Oh, sepulchre. My soul is still my body's prisoner. Like, is it deep yeah. or is it just emo? Like, my doom to wait, my punishment to, to live. live. Like, that's kind of right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's really, really So maybe it's just a seven then. Yeah. yeah. A seven. I However, though, oh. I mean, this category here emotional slash comedic impact oh. i mean this to me is 
Even mm. though it's not funny, I, I would still give this oh, probably but the, the highest. Oh, the emotional is so high because maybe it's... I would maybe just dock it a single point for kind of not being both, but maybe a nineteen. Mm. If this is played truly earnestly, mm. you know, she is talking about ending her life. You know, she is. <coughs> she, that is what and that is the had extent that from of the her tenor feelings. as well. It's quite a yeah. running theme. And uh, uh, yeah, and, and I think that is just it is extremely powerful, kind of thinking that you are watching a person who is going through that, mm -hmm. you know? And maybe that is worth a 20. For now. For now. For all for now. Enjoyment. Do, 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 do. Enjoyment. I mean, it's uncomfortable. I see a lot of myself in, in uh, this role. <laughs> do, you, do you think it would only be a 7 or an 8 versus on discomfort? Yeah, I mean, again, mm. I have, I'd have to be in a specific mood to listen to mm -hmm. it. And, and to sing it, it and as to well. sing it truthfully, I have to tap into a place that's not very comfortable for me. Yeah, okay. Which I don't know if everyone does that. Like, sorry, I don't mean that in a like a method thing, but like, it's an emotional rule, and I want yeah, yeah, to yeah. give it the gravitas it deserves. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have to go to like a not super happy place. Mm. So, so maybe to me, for me I find like now. Seven. To me, this is interesting because I think I used to think like that. But can like, you to divorce me, that now? To me, nowadays, um, what I tend to do is I just, I do physically and with my voice the kind of things I'd need to do to have the words be the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when I do that, it actually it evokes a real kind of feeling. But I don't have to tap into anything mm. personally from my past to bring mm. up a feeling. Do you see what I mean? It's No, like, absolutely. So for me, the, the actual ease of the um, getting into the character mm. and the emotion actually comes from the words yeah. themselves and yeah and I do get what you mean that maybe that that's why the lyrics aren't so strong because I think that the lyrics aren't as easy to make convincingly true mm, yeah in terms but, of like earnestness yeah but if we are believing that this is truly earnest I think you know I, well I, that's I, not truly earnest it's the altar <laughs> But yeah, I, I I I feel like I could get a tremendous catharsis from watching that. Mm -hmm. But I can also see that if you are the kind of actor that does that, that would be I cry kind of quite... at like adverts. So me listening to alone and yet alive whilst in a vulnerable position is probably not going to end well. Mm. <laughs> Should we give that an eight for enjoyment? Yeah, go on. Yeah, and how about cultural longevity? I think this is this is one of the more popular ones. Maybe like an eight or a nine or something. Yeah. Isn't it? So this well is known. quite a well-known one. I think if we're going within the GNS community, then it's probably a nine. Let's do it. Let's do the thing. Number two is... The Hour of Gladness from The Mikado. So I can't decide. I think mm. I prefer Alone and Yet Alive to this. Seems really cool okay. to mention another. I am, I'm but actually I, not but sure. I actually I'm waiting don't know. for this. Yeah. I'm waiting for this conversation well, to decide. Okay. Actually, so I'm, I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure. Yeah. because originally I thought this was very one note. Mm -hmm. Chum 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 chum. Which I've also heard transposed higher, which I don't know how I feel about. I feel like da, if you can't. Da, 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 da. So, it's very hard to sing. But there's my favourite bit. They live alone. Da 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 da. That that kind of m musically, it's, yeah. I, I'm, I'm like, gonna I'm gonna flat capsule, out say it. This is a, this this is the twenty. This is my twenty for music. Yes. Wow. I typically try to give only one a twenty, but this is my twenty. I think I think it's great. I don't know if it's my twenty, but I also uh, can't remember what's coming up. Mm. I think this is a nineteen for me. But should, I'm should, happy should we put to... it? No, but I'll put it a nineteen for now. But let's uh, because yeah. I think I think I prefer this one notch more. No, no, I just I just can't decide because I think sometimes mm. I conflate them and that's awful for someone who's played this role and, and loves this role. Yeah. Um, but I think I conflate them because they have similar like mm. sort of similar elements. Yeah, and Loading Yet Alive is also kind of a continuous stream and not verse chorus. Mm. So that they both have that in common. There's just something there's something about the 
O living eye bit. Yeah. That sang. That's it's maybe just slightly less climactic, but um, because I think in certainly I think that song. I think alone yet alive. That kind of starts off, yeah. kind of quite, uh, uh, like really really kind of big, and then kind of gets less interesting as it goes on. Whereas the hour of gladness mm. is just just Climatic. a complete yeah, kind of just, intense keeps going and keeps staircase, going. and that's kind of why musically I think it slightly has the edge. Mm -hmm. No, I see that. Yeah, I think because of how quickly we've changed emotions. I think it has mm. more power. It has a lot of drive and energy yeah. behind it because we've had that frenetic, like, oh, fool, that fleas, my mm. And then we've pivoted into this. Yeah. Into your, like, she internalises it, she squashes it down, and then she mm. goes, okay, in that case, you know, it's very, like, yeah. Dolores Umbridge or something. Like, mm. you know, like it's, it's very much like, on the outside, I'm like this, but actually you're about to, like, mm. you know, raise hell. Poetry. Mm. The hour of gladness is dead and gone. In, in silent, silent sadness, sadness, I live alone. All hope has perished. All lifeless all lies. And all has perished. All Save hope. love, which never. Okay, does. so here's the thing: is it Ugh. deep or is it trite? I I love it. But like that, in silent sadness, I live alone. It's almost it's very emo poetry. Like the setting of it makes it beautiful. Maybe it's not. A, maybe it's just a nine. Do you think? I, th I mean, like, I think it's good. Because I, I think it's there's a beautiful. slight cringe factor. But I, yeah, I'll, we, we can dock it a point for the cringe Because I would give it a 10, but I drop, yeah. I'll dock it a point for the concede. cringe factor. I'm happy to concede a point. Love never dies. Oh, I've heard that one before. Who does he think he is? Lloyd Webber. Right, I think so. Emotional comedic impact. What out of 20? Mm. To me, I mean, this is. very was, emotional. Um, I would <coughs> say, just because of the sheer subject matter of the other one, the other one will probably get a higher mark than this one. So I'm, I'm going to. Which one, sorry? Alone. Uh, alone Yet Alive. So I'm going to say that this one only gets maybe like an 18 or a 19. What do you think? I think an 18. Yeah. Yeah. And, but then when it comes to. Yeah, narrative character importance. How important is this for her character as, oh. as a person who's played her? This is the first moment where we see that she's vulnerable and she might not be the dreadful character that the tenor mm. has painted um because everything we've seen up until now like we've heard about how like dreadful she is and then she's arrived and caused this big scene mm. and, and demanded they help her yeah. and, and insulted both the the romantic uh both the lovers and she's humiliated and then she's humiliated yeah. in public mm. and i then, would say that actually oh. it's much like the bit where <laughs> Julia is on stage and they're mm. all singing the way to the way to be good. She's yeah. like, so ends the, my dream. Because like, it's everything it's, she wants. It's wanted like, in it's life. like, she, you everything's know, crush, cr yeah. crushing her. She is. She doesn't care about the marriage, but she does care about uh, the parts. Yeah. Parts. She, um, this is like somebody absolutely crushed. I think it's so vitally important for her character. Like, I think it's implied mm. that. That they've come from quite a long way. To, to me, life. you know, to me, I think it's another <laughs> 10. I think character importance yeah, for her on. character. Go on. She's ha all character development. Like, um, enjoyment? Like, enjoyment. What do you think? Maybe it's not... It's not Maybe as enjoyment. Yeah, maybe as seven enjoyment. out of 10? Oh, I've done it with an 8. Done it with an 8. Yeah. Are you happy with an 8? Yeah, that's fine. I just don't think I would listen to it that often. Like, yeah. you know, if it's a 10, it's... I'm, I'm listening to it. Yeah. Know, no, I know. I got you. Right. you. Cultural longevity, maybe not as much no, as the other two. No, no. Maybe it's... like um, a seven, an eight? Yeah, let's do seven. 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 Invisible Joker. Invisible it's the joke. head. You know what my, you know my favourite thing's been so far? What? Oh, what? oh I should go to the chiropractor. Um, it's, uh, it's been the pepper tapping. <laughs> How that nice was so that good. That was so weird. That was such I'll a nice I'll be sad if that's not left in Oh. <laughs> You're like, top quality content. Number, Number one is... <laughs> on the day when I was sweated. <gasps> Performance tell, wise. Tell, tell me all, because you, you tell have... us Tell us all about it. This tell is us, my first... Tell us all... This is my first role in The God of the About it. Um... And yeah, totally Tessa was really fun to play. Uh -huh. Having just done Tessa with Forbear, it was really, really fun. It's nice to be a romantic interest instead of a, an old crone, as I often play. Um, however, the Duchess just has my heart in such a different way, which is 
I think she lends credence to that uh, phrase behind every successful man is a, is a woman. Like that's to me, like I know he's not that successful. And like when you, when fun. you think about kind of other, <laughs> you know, character songs oh. in, the, in the gondoliers, this is just the best one. Yeah. Oh, it's so much better yeah. than just Seppi's. Or I like, would actually go as far as say that the Duchess is the best character in the gondoliers. Like oh. if, if we're not thinking about music, if we're just yep. thinking about character yep. wise, oh, yeah. she is the definitely. funniest, definitely. outwardly she the gets... funniest character. And, and this, and this song is just superb. So another regard. example yeah. of that parallel oh. that I was thinking of, what happened to the ring light? I don't know what happened to the ring light. We're ugly again. I feel that how hot that plug is. Ooh, that is hot. Like that is we can't use the ring light, sorry. We're just gonna oh, have to look okay. not lit. That is crazy. I think the Duchess <laughs> is the best character in the Gondoliers. Although I have to say, I not to blow smoke up you. No, no, let me say that again. Not to toot Rachel's horn, not to blow her own trumpet. None of these sound good. But the way Don Alhambra was portrayed in Four Bears Gondoliers is probably my favourite iteration um, because it managed to make him not creepy and not threatening and be incredibly funny and lend a lot of... He was so funny. Depth. He was, like, I'll tell you like, all about Line it. readings of this were... <laughs> Musically... It's just really fun when you hear the intro. We're off to the races. It's very musical, isn't it? It's very musical. Yeah, and it just, it, it's almost got like a horse race clip to it. Yeah. And the only thing I don't like about the song, and it's not even that I don't like, the thing I find challenging about it is the sing. The first verse is very straightforward. So, you know, I started doing this and it didn't work and I wasn't able to subdue my husband. He was, you know, he was in charge. And then we flip. And you have the biggest run-on sentence. There must, like, tell me if there's a bigger run-on sentence, right? Yeah. She goes, But I found that a reliance on my threatening appearance and a resolute defiance of marital interference and a, uh, a gentle intimation of my firm determination to see what I could do to be wife and husband too oh, I love that. was the only thing required, oh, not finished, I love for it. to make his temper supple and you could, like... It doesn't stop. It's like that. That is, I. That, that, I think it doesn't stop about about that, before. I love that. Ever willing to be wooing? She's just like we were willing to be wooing. Did we were really we were wooing? wooing. Oh. Is is that do do or do do? I think it's the second one. You but you could wooing. do it and and add that jazz slide. Do I ever um. <laughs> completely? I know. That's my favorite. I know. I'm parted. We were. Nearly broken, broken hearted. When in when it's so equal, reunited. This is we my favourite bit. Equally and he's delighted. Like and then she's like, Oi. We were equally <laughs> delighted. <laughs> delighted. So with double shotted guns. She, yeah, she goes all guns blazing. Is this an 18? It is high for me. The only reason I would take a point or two off would be because it doesn't have as much emotional so heft as some of the others. No, 18, 18. I would have gone okay, higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for musicality, mm -hmm. enjoyment, mm -hmm. like yeah. setting, and it just and it picks the pace yeah. as well, which I always appreciate. In and the lyrics, and I think we've already discussed the lyrics kind of as well. Oh, they're fabulous. It's at least the nine for me. Is it as good as I fall that fleest? Is it as does it get? I think it is. I think it is because yeah, I think it's remarkable. that this is simpler, but this is just such a fun idea encapsulated in a very quick song. It's under two minutes if you do it. But and I I genuinely think that the that the poetry is incredible here. It's as you were saying that is that is some both that is crazy. But it the thing is that you also understand it and you can it's accessible to the listener. Um, how about emotional comedic impact? Oh my, has the potential to be one of hilarious. the funniest songs in the canon. Doesn't it? Like, and I've seen it done a couple of different ways, but I think mm -hmm. you leaned into this and, and so did we when I did the, the Glock production. You know, there's a potential for, if not S&M, then definitely some yeah. sort of physical dominance, which may or may not be problematic in, in mm -hmm. this day and age. But, you know, I think like she wears the trousers for want of a better term. Mm -hmm. She is definitely in charge. And there's a lot of fun ways you can show that in the second verse, I think. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I love, like, Rachel has this great moment in her gondoliers where the Duke sort of springs up into a footstool. Like, imagine something like Beauty and the Beast, and it's just wonderful. And you're like, he's so obedient. He, like, springs into that little yeah. crouch dog position. Like, yes, I'm here, I'm ready, <laughs> master kind of thing, mistress. Um, and that's just really fun and just hyped up the yeah. comedy, I think. So, yeah, for me, 
enjoyment, emotion, comedy. I mean, it's it's all high. it's emotional slash comedic I, impact. I mean, nineteen. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think I dock it a point for yeah. just not really being like very deep. But apart yeah. from that, like it's it's so funny. It's, <laughs> it's just hilarious. And then narrative character importance. I mean, I would say that in the Sorry. sense that oh gosh, I would say that in the sense that um. <coughs> no kind of song in the gondoliers is like really that important to the overall huh. narrative so i say that it for that reason <coughs> like it can't get higher than an eight for me but i think mm. that in terms of character importance it, it would get an eight i think yeah she is that is so well reflects her character because we actually don't see that much of her in act one because mm. it's mainly about the duke it's mm. the duke of Plastor. absolutely so this is we get the introduction just saying he is his wife his, his grace her yeah. duchess so this is where now we're understanding how he's turned things around. Now we're understanding how uh, Plaza Toro has like yeah. survived for so long because of her, really. But yeah, yeah. Let's go eight, seven. Yeah, eight. let's go eight. Eight's fine. Um, <coughs> enjoyment. Oh, I mean, this is I this would is say a... one of the most enjoyed songs. I love hearing this, seeing it, performing yeah. it. Yeah, it's a ten for me. Oh, okay. I mean, I probably would have given it a nine just because I feel like <gasps> oh. it's a notch below "Oh Fall That Fleest." Because that's but just so yeah, spine it's just tingling. Yeah, go nine, go nine. Yeah, I, I think that it, it, it is a notch lower. It's not quite in. <coughs> and then cultural longevity, I'd say similar to Ophel that Fleas. Or, or like, I don't think it like quite has like true like it. It doesn't really have any mm. knowledge out, like outside the genus, I, but I it is iconic within the community. If you like genus, this is a popular. It is pretty iconic. So maybe a nine. I think, yeah, I think it's because honestly, like Buttercup is the one that no, everyone, like, yeah, everyone, anyone knows on that, the street so. could know that in theory. So yeah, I, I think say this probably because that is a nine. Yeah. So let's say nine. This one's doing really well. <laughs> oh. Okay, the scores are in. <coughs> oh my god! In sixteenth place, <clears throat> we have. Come Mighty Must from Princess Ida. That, that was my prediction. Then we have um, When Frederick Was a Little Lad. I had that third, Coming in in 15th third place. bottom, so actually, yeah. And then in 14th place, we have Hail Men Are Wars Men. Really? Uncored Little Buttercup. Do you think people are going to get really freaked out when they see how low Buttercup is on this list? I don't think so. I think no. people understand... Again, nothing against it. I will sing it. I will pull it out whenever anyone says thing is a bit of GNS. I will pull that out any day of the week. Even Tuesday. Even Tuesday. And I normally fast from GNS on the Tuesday, so yeah. I'm very lucky. So, number 13 is Boldface Ranger from Utopia Limited. Wow. More than Buttercup. Feels right, though. Really. Yeah. So, which is better, Boldface Ranger or When Our Gallant Norman Foes? Oh, Which when our there. gallant number fair is 100%. Okay, so in that case, Boldface Ranger will say that is 13th, and when our gallant Norman foes is 12, number 12. Not a competition. Yeah, then 11 is <coughs> many years ago from HMS Pinafore, so that's yeah. a bit better than even yeah. like that. And I think that's right, because it does have some emotional impact. It's like a dramatic song, it's yeah. interesting. Whereas all the ones so far, okay, Come Mighty Must, When Frederick Was a Little Lad, I'm for the Logic Up, Boldface Ranger, When I Got Norman Face. I think that Not I'm, much emotion. it makes sense to me. Yeah. Then after that, like number 10 is Oh, would some demon power when but a maid? So I, I have yeah. scored that initially much lower, but I think because yeah. I don't have the appreciation you do for Utopia, I think it's more fair. And that's just because I haven't taken the time to listen to it and get to know. I think it's fair that we've yeah. taken your scores more in, in into um, consideration. And then um, number nine is There Grew a Little Flower. Okay. To me, that feels right. I know you might have thought it would have done higher. No, 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 me, that feels good for that me. That feels right. Yeah. And then um, number eight is Come Bumpers, I Ever So Many. Oh, I know, it came lower than I was expecting, actually, after our conversation. I mean, I wanted then. it to go higher, I think. Yeah. But, but when you actually get down to brass tacks and you go, is this as good as on the day when I was mm. wedded, if we take them to be songs that generally accomplish yeah. the same thing, no, I don't think it is. And then but I do have a softness for yeah. that. And then number seven <laughs> goes to Oh Foolish Fay from Iolanthe. Hmm. Yeah. I think that would make some people's top five. Yeah. But I think... I think it's not, it's not like, mind-blowing It's not mind-blowing. I think, I, I think... But it is fun. And then and number warm. six goes to Sir Rupert Murgatroyd. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which I'm I'm that... a little bit surprised that that one came above. So high. Come bumpers, oh foolish friends, Sir Rupert Murdoch. Uh, so for that, that is it. But it's got the emotional that's the factor. Thing. I think that's. And this is all like, oh, this is all. Oh, and that recit in the middle. Like, it, that is, it a, is really good. That is a, ooh, moment. And I love come bumpers, and I really so, enjoyed performing. Yeah, it. but oh, actually, it's not as it's not as emotionally complex as you would sing it at a musical. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's like a silly thing. Yeah, no, I think um, I think that's fair. I really have a soft spot for Rodrigo, mm. so for me, Sir Rupert Murgatroyd is like. Then number five goes to Top Sad five. is that woman's lot. Silver does the raven hair. Oh, I thought it'd be so much higher. That was my prediction. I mean, all one. of these marks are really good. It though. was. Like, what are we on now? I mean, this is 67 out of... Like 80? 80. So it did it's really well. Um, and then I, number yeah. four, number four goes to O oh, Fool That Fleest from the Mikado. She's just one of the greatest entrances. It's so it's good. Because like, oh. that is even considering that's like in and out one finale as well. And then, num- and then number three, though actually, surprisingly, is Alone and Yet Alive. Mm. I thought that was going to be number two or maybe even number one. Um, but I, I think the hour of gladness is number two, and to me, actually, I think that's right. There's something about that song that really hit me, mm-hmm. like recently, and I could have. It, where, where is alone and yet alive? Kind of as I was saying, it like trails it, off. Towards she also the end. restarts. She has to come on dead stage, like blank mm. stage. Sorry, and then alone and yet alive, like. The other one is a smoother transition, and she has to show and it's all like that. It's like a snapshot yeah. of like I think it's perfect, but then surprisingly enough, number one went to on the day when oh, I was wedded, wedded, which that's a surprise to me, and I think that's the first time the gondoliers <laughs> have won. Oh, a category. So Let me like, just double we, check. I, I mean, I'm a little bit kind of. I don't know. I think I, I would have put Arrow Gladys as number one. I but I, I could have moved the top five around a little bit. Honestly, do you think? I thought. What was five again? Five was sad as that woman's not. I had that as my number one. Oh wow! Followed by on the day when I was wedded. Mm. Because I thought that silver does a raven hair and sad as that woman's not have more emotional as well as musicality. Yeah. yeah. And I had when I gathered Norman Fair is much higher actually, but in talking it through and mm. listening, re-listening to some of them and watching clips of certain performances. Yeah. I just think the alto in Mikado when done properly has just some of the most incredible yeah. alto moments. Whereas Gondolier, I mean, which her three arias came in the top, top five, <laughs> that's kind of nuts. Um, but, it's, it's, but it's crazy to me that on the day that I was wedded, could have actually beat them. I think may, maybe because it was only by two marks, yeah. and I wonder if maybe we did her emotional comedic impact too highly. I don't know. I for me. It's very difficult to score those in the same category. Mm. So I think there's an argument to say that either takes the one or the two, depending on what you appreciate. I, as an a alto mezzo actress, mm. or a mezzo who gets cast as altos, appreciate having a song that allows me to show something, whether that's a hilarious yeah, comedic yeah. thing, like in On the Day When I Was Wedded, or Emotional Vulnerability. I think On the Day When I Was Wedded gives you more stage time to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, the Hour of Gladness is so short. What is it? 50 seconds? But like, that, I, did, it's, I think it's it longer than long, that, but it's it? just, it's that an enormous Longing moment of catharsis. Yeah. Da, 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 da. You know, that, it's just, it's heartrending. And like, do you get the same kind of level of catharsis or fun <laughs> doing when I, on the day when I was wedded? Maybe you do. Like, when I sing at last, for me that's, is oh, that it's everything? so triumphant. Yeah, that, it's triumphal yeah. arches. Rachel. No, I get it, and I think is I. If you're telling me that, then I believe but you. Because you're I will the say the that yeah. I have played the Duchess a lot more recently, age-wise, mm. than I have uh, been in a Mikado. Yeah. So for me, the Duchess, I was playing her in my thirties, which I know is young, let's say, mm. for the role, but like is older than when I played other yeah. alto and mezzo roles. And then having played the alto in the Mikado at different ages, but all much younger than this yeah. one, I think now to do it again, I would bring something else to it. Oh, which for is sure. which, which yeah. is like why I think it's really fun if you get like the nice thing about Genesis, you get to revisit these roles, and you might do them in your twenties, mm. your thirties, forties, fifties, beyond. 
like that's kind of really cool. So do you feel good about the I feel Duchess being number one? Do you feel good about that? As an alto, as a mezzo, mm. yes, I feel good. good. And I think if we then can if good. we can consider the the hour of gladness alone at eleven all or feel that please are all in the top five, we can say that that's yeah, almost they, they the they same only as had, being joint first. Yeah, like <laughs> basically like um the those three Mikado songs came their scores were 68, 69, and 71. Wow. And on the day so that really I was close. wedded was 73. So actually, like the top five, looking at it, there's a point in it. it that's, like, or yeah. Fool That Flea is a 67. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. And, then... and that the lowest scoring one was actually 33 out of 80. So we have really widespread of scores, but those top yeah, five were really like close. really close. I'm, I'm happy fair. with that because I feel like... Um, <laughs> I'm taking from you, like, your kind of emotional journey, like, performing these songs. And, mm. like, maybe once you've played the alto again in a Mikado, you will feel different. Oh. Or if I... Because I've never done Lady Jane. Yeah. And I think maybe... Yeah, Because I, I think I'm an Angela for now. Angela's the... Angela, yeah. Yeah, well, like... I'm, there's never two early. No, but, like, I think so, there's some... Roles it's not like, as if you don't often see very like kind of older ladies I am soprano, trying like young soprano characters oh so. yeah definitely why not um, the other way around I am mm -hmm. trying to cultivate a Malin streak I'm getting like little grey hairs in this oh, place nice. and how nice would that be for Lady Jane oh like, like if I just, yeah, 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 yeah like yeah, just, yeah. just a one yeah, strike that. that would be wonderful yeah that should be that'd be great Um, I really liked Katrine Kirkman's um Lady Jane and Patience. And the oh, I've not Patience. seen their Patience. She was lovely. She, but, yeah, she just, it's very them. simple. She's just leafing through a beauty magazine at <gasps> oh, the bar. Nice. It's yeah. really, it's very simple and lets her do the the living. She's a fabulous performer. That, that's then all, all we have time for here at um, the house that I live in. <laughs> with Emma Rashi. Thank you very much for watching. Remember that we have Gondoliers DVDs still <coughs> available. Ooh. And remember that I am performing as Mad Margaret in Redigal on the 10th of August in Buxton. And also we are performing in the Grand Duke again as Lisa and the Baroness August. on the 4th of August. In the afternoon. So catch us in Buxton. Come and say hi. Um, and tell us if you agreed or tell disagreed us if you with like our rankings. The, the videos. And we will say, oh, hi, it's, it's nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Rachel GNS Middle from, from YouTube. And I'll say Emma Retti, and channel. what I should have said at the start was Emma Retti to start rating these ultra warriors. Yeah, it's a bit late for puns. I, was, I, I like that, though. We can film a fake intro. And... Maybe, we'll, let, maybe, maybe we just let's like do that in the morning. Yeah. We can do a fresh... In, oh, I have to put on my very clothes. We could do a different intro in the morning. Let's I think our that. intro is a bit weird. I think our in, I, I think you're a bit weird. Really? So, uh, oh, you know what? The way we have to do this, how do we have to do? Is this? we have to say, okay, this is going to be really weird, but just bear with it. Um, so we have to go number sixteen. Oh no no! I have together. to go. I have to go. Like number, number sixteen is just you. Number, number fifteen. <laughs> you got to do them all. Sorry, I'm just gonna let you do it. Let's. Oh oh no 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 no, no 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 no! Let's do it together. But we have number to go. We, 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 we have to say is. Okay. So but let's let's do sixteen again as well. Mm -hmm. number, number sixteen is. is. Number fifteen is. Number fourteen is. Number 13 is... Number 12 is... Number 11 is... Number 10 is... Sorry. Number 9 is... Number 8 is... Number, number seven, seven is. is. Number six is. Number five is. Number four is. Number three is. Number two is. Number one is love it and then at the end of the video yeah, yeah. what we're gonna do is <laughs> i'm gonna put that video yeah. that we just did 
at the end so people can see how stupid that was. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel.